Hello everyone, uh, McCall here, welcome back to the penultimate episode of Star Trek Adventures The Expanse. This is the last really, really serious episode before we have a more of a fun-themed uh, finale for next week. And just to, you know, make it, or draw the tension out even more, I am starting with Zero Threat because I am starting the players already in hot water. And to make things a little more interesting, I've... This is a completely split the party episode, so we'll see how this goes. Um, without further ado, I believe uh, Lieutenant Commander Reinhardt has the log for his side. Chief Engineer's personal log, Stardate. Uh, what's the new system to write? Um, 8499.8.3. Nine, Gotta get used to that. Well, got some fun news. The captain, first officer, and chief medical are off ship right now, so it's my time to have some fun with the crew and take her out for a nice little joyride. Promise not to scratch the paint too much. The three of them are off to look at a you know, Ryza 2, essentially, type world. It's called Gan, Gaan, something. We'll make sure that's spelled out in my report. They're hoping that it's going to be a nice R&R &R world where you can kick up your boots on the table and have a nice rest. But as for us, well, the ship and I, we're going to be heading to a system that the Lachant have called Bela Triad. I think that's how it's pronounced. It is a trinary star system G-type, so yellow stars for the layman. They're in a perfect equilateral triangle, as I've been told by some of the science department members. They're all quite a buzz about it. More shall be busy with heading up uh, the scans, and uh, yeah, Noel has proven himself to be a decent uh, well watcher of the engineering division. Him and Zax have been doing pretty good working together. It's been interesting to stand up on the bridge. Having to worry about other things, but at the same time, it's also been fun. I do look forward to having the captain back aboard, though, knowing that they're safe. I blame the old Mako side of me for always worrying about the other individuals. With that said, I do hope we have a lot of fun with this little scientific mission. Moose out. All right. Uh, so, you have a little bit of a interesting sensation moose between the time where you finish recording your personal log and the time you regain consciousness on the bridge actually all of you are currently on the bridge let's actually switch you over to the bridge regain consciousness uh primrose you the last thing you remember most more clearly than anyone else was a flash of bright white and then primrose just sort of split apart at the seams uh, so you're having to Recongregate yourself around your flower. Uh, the bridge power is off. Uh, life, the air is breathable but stale, indicating that life support has gone into power save mode, and the ship is deadly quiet. Um, so that's where you're at. Moose just looks around groggily. <laughs> All right, roll call. Who's awake? I Whoa. am Commander. As Primrose is sort of slowly trying to congeal themselves back together, Moral wake up with his head, uh, hands on his head. I'm, uh, I'm here. This right. is Bridge to Engineer. I'm down there awake. Noel, you are suffering the sim a similar thing where you could have sworn that you were prepping for a morning shift and then all of a sudden you're now waking up on the diagnostics table. The warp core is dead. The fusion core is dead. Um, bare power only from chemical backups, really. Uh, no here, sir. Um, we are down to minimum power. Um, warp core is down. We're going to have to Cold restart, and worst of all, the coffee got cold. Understood. Bridge to all hands. All department heads, check in on your members. Report to the bridge to Lagos. 
If anyone's missing, if anyone's injured, get them to medical and report that information to Lagos as well. Lagos, you're on comms for now. Lagos nods. Okay. Let's get a status report of this ship. If we're okay, how's this ship looking? One moment, sir. I'll see what I can pull. Uh, I'm going to get up and see if I can go to any of the consoles that are, like, you know, since they're off. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to try and see if I can find a wall panel for one of the EPS relays and see if I can get emergency power brought on. Okay. Uh, roll me a control plus engineering, please. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of three, considering the state of the ship. Uh, let's see. I know my ship. I would say that you do, yes. Excellent. And you know what? Since you don't have any threat, I'll give you a three Ooh. for uh, two extra dice. Okay. And EPS is a focus. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Well, oh. 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 Well, that's a lot oh. of complications. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Uh, I have an idea for one of those complications. Okay. I like it. I like it when players make things interesting. Um, I'm thinking this ship is using the old NX designs and the Columbia designs. Mm -hmm. So I forgot about a couple of the safety features they have and um, the steps they're supposed to take for discharging mm -hmm. a uh, EPS relay. So I forgot to discharge it, and it still has a charge. Yes, it does. So let's uh, roll some challenge dice then, shall we? Uh, oh, that's a lot of... Uh, so you take five uh, shocking damage. And that's <laughs> enough for an injury and to knock you out. As he's blown across the bridge. Uh, Let's the see. other complication uh, is when Moose's body completes the circuit, uh, Moore, uh, your pa the rocks that were built into your console blow up. And as I'm trying to. Of, you take two points of stress damage. I want to resist the damage. Oh, and how do you resist the damage? Oh, it's, it's a roll of some kind I have to make it, isn't it? Or avoid damage or avoid injury? Uh, oh, yeah, avoid injury. I believe that is... Oh, yeah. I'm just... I don't know it offhand, and in the purpose of just keeping things going, let's roll a fitness plus... I don't know, fitness plus security test. At least this way you'll stay conscious. Uh, focus, full body workout I'm used to yeah. getting, you know I'll let that happen, I'll let that happen You know what, just because I think it's funny Here, I have another dice Cool Oh man Off to a good start, I see <laughs> Okay, I think that was like a difficulty one So you get like four momentum out of the deal I mean, we'll take it Yeah, uh, so Reinhardt, you are tingly all over and not in a good way um you... i imagine i just hit this console and i'm just like fuck yeah uh you regain consciousness for the second time and mm -hmm. uh, see that moore has uh burns on his hands and you have burns well in more places oh, sir. yeah <sighs> right right the collection coil I forgot about that. that's the thing now. Everyone, step back from your consoles. I'm doing this again. I'm going to use my tricorder just to double check everything. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> that reduces the difficulty by one more. Okay. <laughs> so now it's a difficulty too? Yes, indeed. Okay. It's, it's a good news we're not at full power too. Yeah. Yeah. It just, just, just was holding the charge. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, oof, hmm, okay. Hey, and, there we go. And one more momentum. So, well, the captain didn't really need the uh, holographic projectors in his ready room anyways. Or, for that matter, emergency life support in there. Uh, you are able to jury-rig it. Uh, jury-rig a, a cable to this... Uh, uh, stand-up console since Moore's panel is shorting and sparking and 
what little information you're able to get from the ship is the ship is in uh, battery operated mode. Uh, fusion core is dead. Warp core is dead. Life support is operating at 20%. Uh, let's see. Uh, department heads or Lagos, if someone wants to play Lagos, reports that or all department heads report in. Um, no further injuries to the crew. Uh, everyone is reporting similar uh, sudden unconsciousness followed by reawakening with loss of short-term memory. And what does the display show for um, any damage to the ship? Uh, there is wow. some um, more. Well, uh, once you get your hands detingled. Uh, it would have been a difficulty zero roll, but you have enough momentum now. Uh, you're at five now. Um, oh, okay. Uh, your computer reports that uh, there has been some slight uh, micro fractures along the upper portions of the saucer, but aside from that, everything is fine. So I just looked at Moose. Micro fractures. That's all that's coming up on these scans. Uh, scan the area if you can. Are we in the right system? Uh, give me a minute with this low of power. It's taking a little bit longer to get readings. Okay. Uh, while he's doing that, uh, let's go down to engineering. Where Noel is busy trying to figure out what the heck's going on with the engines. That I am. Uh, let's see. Reinhardt, not here. Um, Captain had an idea with Zach that sort of take him off the table for the time being. And so, Noel, it is you and Bud and one of the Nalu servicemen volunteers known as Kelsos Mad. Um, so, if you could please. Now, there's two ways to bring up a warp core. Well, restart a fusion core and a warp core. You can do it the safe way, which will take hours. Or you can do the dangerous way, which will take, well, still take a while, but less time than that. Which way do you want to go? What would the difficulty be for each one? Uh, let's see. The first would be control engineering, difficulty of three. Uh, the other one will be the more dangerous way would be a daring engineering with a difficulty three. But I will... I will warn you ahead of time that there will be some th of that juicy, juicy threat spent. Yeah, and since I kind of already got on uh, on Moose about not following the manual when bringing something up, I think we need to do this one a little bit more um, on the controlled side. Okay. Uh, so if someone wants to pick up Kelsos Mad, the ship is in no condition to assist right now. Um, this is probably an activation for him, too, if you want to. Um. Uh, I'll grab Kelso's mad. Sure. And I'll give you a threat so I can use the bolt engineering. And I'll take two momentum for that fourth die. All right. Let's see how you roll, Noel. Ooh, that. I didn't even intend for that to rhyme. And power systems, I assume? Absolutely. Okay, that's a lot of uh, successes. Um, Spence, what's your roll for Kelsos? Uh, about to find out. I'll bump his control to an eight. <clears throat> actually, the third one on mine is actually a crit. I guess I didn't hit the, the focus. Oh, really? Ah. Oh, yes, it yeah. be. So that's five successes. So you get uh, two momentum. So those spend two, get two. Spent, you get right back. Good, good on you. Okay, so let's see what goes on in the bridge. Um, uh, Mr. Moore, if you could please roll me a uh, insight plus science. Uh, this is going to be difficulty three, and the ship cannot assist right now. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to take a third uh, dice for a third 
a momentum for a third dice so I can activate uh, cautious. Um, okay. Sensor operations? Yeah, that'll work. Wow. Well, that's uh, not a success there. Uh, so the well, I have cautious, so I can oh, I can yes. reroll one. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is uh, uh, Moose. Your time as a commanding officer of this ship is uh, going down really well. Uh, I'm I'm enjoying this. I'm hoping the away team goes better. <laughs> the away team just gets beamed into space at this point. I mean, what if the away team knew something that we didn't? <laughs> uh, My uh, console just fizzles out as the last of the power goes away. Yeah. Uh, so, more you, your sensors are returning nothing, and, and, and I don't mean empty space. Uh, they're returning null value. There's, they're seeing absolutely nothing out there. You might have a better chance looking out a window than, you know, trusting these things. I'm going to legitimately stand up and go, uh, like, into the observation lounge next door and look out the window. Oh, then you're going to see something very interesting. Because you are the first person to see... Uh, where is it? It is here. We're in a rave? Yeah, you're basically in a rave. It's a rave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so not just any BPS rave. Concert. It's a space Best rave. Episode ever. <laughs> uh, so more, what you see looking out a window is um, I, I hope you're not photosensitive and you know prone to seizures. Um, no. Good, that's good because several um, dancing. Uh, uh, as far as you can see, uh, the star, the ship is inside something or surrounded by something that is causing a one hell of a light show. Through the open door, I just yell, "Commander!" <laughs> yeah, Moose will head on over. Oh yeah. Uh, you want to see this? What is it? And he was walking up behind him. We ain't in Kansas anymore. <laughs> just looks at him like, that's an old one. It's older than me. Mm -hmm. And on this one, and on that note, we are going to have a scene change. So you're going to lose one momentum. And Commander Hadrix, we are going to go to your log. First officer's loss, log, stardate 85001.0. Well, this has been an interesting trip so far. Myself, the captain, and the doctor were out on our reconnaissance mission to this resort world that is supposed to be kind of like a second Risa near called Gan, while the Concordia stays over to do the um, triad star system look over. And apparently once we hit system here, we got the shuttle got um, disrupted by a energy field and our power completely drained, nearly completely drained and we've crashed. Um, at this point, the captain is the captain is unconscious and looks like he he's was dead. looks like he's been infected by Ooh. a corona. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> She's been, been he's been infected by a local pathogen that got into the system when the environmentals went down. <laughs> Uh, at this point, we've only got about 46 hours worth of energy left in the shuttle, so myself and the doctor are going to have to try to stabilize the captain, see if we can get him conscious, and then see what we can do about the shuttle. End log. Yeah. Uh, so because this is a split party thing, if you guys not... So if anyone who wants to bring a support character wants to have tagged along in the shuttle retroactively, feel free to do so. Uh, let's see. So... We're going to cut to the inside of 
the runabout, where Do Commander Hadrix and Dr. Ferliza, who are sitting around the center meeting area, the lounge-ish area, occasionally casting glances at the shuttle bay at the door to the cockpit, which is currently sealed uh, to prevent any more of the atmosphere from leaking in through the massive crack through in the windshield that was suffered when your ship, well, when the captain did a daring uh, crash land, or daring landing and probably contracted whatever, something in the air. Now, uh, the captain's face is looking far paler. And he's un he is mostly unconscious in the bio bed. And uh, Dr. Feliza, you have already run some preliminary scans on him to know that there is some sort of toxin running through his vein, through his system. And apparently there is a... Is that a Gorn? Yes. Oh boy. And what is the Gorn's name? Uh, Thursday. Ah, Thursday. <laughs> and what role is Thursday? Counselor. Of course. Okay. Cool. Counselor's, Counselor Thursday. Uh, which I guess means that... No, no, it's Thursday. Ah. Day is the last name. Thursday. Okay, Thurs or Day. Gotcha. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Hadrix, Ferliza, take it away. Doctor, any more update on the captain at the moment? Uh, stable is a sugarcoating term, but we need to figure out whatever that toxin is in his system and get rid of it soon-ish, I would think. Well, sooner rather than later. Yeah, you would think for a reconnaissance mission like this, we would have had some more information as to the system and its whereabouts and its possible ecology, but we'll have to apparently do that on the fly here. Well, apparently. sorry, a little bit of extra GM info, is that this was a quite a nicely thought of resort world about a year ago when the information was last updated. So something's changed. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, when we were, so I'm trying to make sure here. So essentially we went through this energy field and then we sort of like crash landed on this world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me run a, not the most sciencey sort, but let's have for Lisa run a, a quick scan of the environment to see if, uh, you know, uh, it's the in the atmosphere's changed from the last time we were given information about this place. Entirely possible. If if uh, Scotty or Sunbay want to bring a character along, they can do so too. It's a large runabout. Um, let's roll an insight plus science roll. Um, okay. If you have atmospheric conditions or infectious diseases, either of those would be good focuses here. This will yeah. be a difficulty of. Um, let's see. Difficulty of three, and the runabout cannot the runabout cannot assist right now. Oh boy. Uh, I will take a momentum for a third die. Okay. And yeah, I'm just gonna do that and pray. I don't have a focus. Nice. You don't need a focus. Hey, there anymore. we go. Well, that's good. Uh, Starfleet continues to uh, m make improvements of turning the extremely technical into layman's terms so that even someone <laughs> not specialized in various areas may understand it. Uh, so, yes, the atmospheric conditions have changed a slight amount. Uh, it was a Class M planet to begin with, and it's still a Class M planet. Uh, the only problem is that there appears to have been uh, evidence of some sort of biological or attack at some point in the last sev in the last six to eight months or so. Um, you see uh, all sorts of uh, chemical readings and whatnot that are definitely not natural and reek of 
biological warfare. Uh, you're also detecting several very faint life signs hmm. that are roaming around outside. All right. Uh, Commander, we have... It appears to be signs of some sort of biological warfare that have remained in the planet's atmosphere. Biological warfare? Jeez, what are these people up to? It's a good question. I'll, uh... Send the results of these scans to your data pad really quick, and they'll just sort of, you know, tap a few buttons and send that data over. Um, Alarak asked for a copy of that to be sent to them as well. Okay, yeah. So we think really we'll do so. Take a xenomorph anthropology, archaeology, or exosociology look. Yes. Uh, Tagging's starting to take uh, note of like damage on the shuttle. Okay. <clears throat> As you begin to all look through and analyze what the heck has happened, something begins pounding on the exter exterior of the shuttle uh, through the cockpit. Oh, through the cockpit. Oh, good. Okay, that's not a good thing. Uh, <laughs> Hedrix is going over for the... I'm guessing there might be some some type 3 phaser rifles on here? Uh, there will be, uh, if you want to give me threat. Uh, point of, you know, threat to take one, go right ahead. But on the plus side, you won't have to take threat later on down, give me threat down the line, so... This is true. Yeah. That's yeah. true, yeah. Yeah, let's say that, you know, we go to the, arm <laughs> the armory right there and just grab a couple... <laughs> He's grabbing a type 3. Okay. Uh, I guess for Lisa, we'll grab one too. They're not the most security person, but you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, weird, weird question. Since you said it was coming from the cockpit. Yeah. Was there a way to tell through the noise that was being made? That could we tell if it was like on the hull or if it was through the viewport or? Uh, whatever. It was something hitting the, um, the view screen or the windshield. Oh. I'll <laughs> I'll look to the commander and say, like, should we open the door or should we just wait? Well, that's what I was going to say. Since the captain was um, since the captain was down due to whatever environmental issue is going on, can we filter that out or is it better to keep us environmentally sealed at this point? Doctor said to me says we should probably stay environmentally sealed. One of the features of this runabout is of its compart compartmentalized design. So if you want to create a you know airlock kind of situation, you can all move back to the bunk bathroom transport room engine area and use the dining room as a airlock. Hmm. That's probably an idea. I'm Tegan's a security officer, right? No, they're engineering. No. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, the cap since the captain's going to be out for most of this episode, he has requested uh you know Security Officer. Uh, no. <laughs> Perfect. I thought so. Doc Doctor, everyone else uh, everyone else, why don't you Go into the back area, and we'll use the area as a use the antechamber as a makeshift airlock. Myself and Fennel will um, proceed through into the cockpit to see what's going on. Doctor, if anything happens to me, obviously you're in charge. Your first priority is to try to see what we can do about keeping everybody here safe, and then seeing what we can do about the power generation and get that back to running. Like you need it, but uh, I want to take two threat and uh, environmental suits also on board the ship. Oh, yeah. 
that's pretty much. I'm not even going to give you a threat for that because okay. those are kind of necessary for this madness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then that works too. And then we're yeah. grabbing the suits and putting uh, them on. Yeah. I, yeah. The type three phaser suit and then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. One. Uh, one suit up sequence later, and you guys are in the Ashen Montage. Yes. <laughs> you guys are in a. You guys are. Eh, sorry. You guys are in your uh, EVA suits and are, are ready to open up the doorway. And like the good commander I am, I'll stand right to the side and get ready to open the door for the Fennel go in <laughs> uh it's nice to know a com it's nice to have a commander who puts the lives of his officers before himself hey he's taxing he ain't stupid <laughs> yep <laughs> okay so oops wrong, wrong window for that shortcut a good commander knows when to use all the tools at his disposal yep <laughs> aka use all the cannon fodder precisely Okay, uh, so, Mr. Finnell, you walk in, and you are visibly sickened by what you see. Uh, you see that something humanoid with um, very, uh, mottled blue skin and rotting uh, teeth, yellowing eyes, and far less skin than really should be on, him, on their uh, body. Uh, tattered clothes, uh, Open sores, seeping wounds, everything that is gross and yucky. Well, this thing has it, and it is. It has some sort of pipe in its limp wrist, and it's fling. It's trying to bang on the uh, door or the window, or the uh, da, da, the windshield to the sh shuttlecraft. Zombies! Why did it have to be zombies? <laughs> You're a squeak, a squeal coming from. Uh... Alarak upon seeing it up on the uh, internal scanners. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Fennel, you notice several more are shambling your way. Do we have any power at all? Or the ship's totally. Uh, the ship has oh. battery backups, and you know, should you just you know stay still and run life support, you could probably have about I think it was forty six hours worth of energy left. But if you actually want to fly places or, you know, do anything more interesting than that, yeah, it's significantly less. Uh, you also notice a large crack down the center of the screen where the stress of the impact has caused the windshield to shatter. And several alerts on various consoles are happily informing you that this is not void sealed. Do not fly into space unless absolutely necessary. And on that note, we are going to cut back to the USS Concordia. While the, while the players here, you know, figure out what they're going to do. And now... Okay, uh, so you guys now realize that you are in the rave, or the space rave of unknown origin. What do you wish to do? Uh, Moose is going to head to a console just to check how much time has uh, passed since his log hmm. to now. Uh, that would be approximately... Well, your short-term memory loss is approximately one and a half days. So you recorded your log on uh, December the 31st, and Hadrick's recorded his log on January 1st. Oof. All right. Um, bridge to engineering. How's the reboot coming along? We need power. Oh, we'll start following the manuals. We've been making good progress, but it's not extremely fast. You know what? I'm going to give you an order to ignore the manual. I want you to trip it and rip it. Do you know what that means? Sir, the manual is in 
cased in plastic with a glass screen. It's hard to rip. No, tripping and ripping is a maneuver done by Charles Tucker on the old NX Enterprise. He cold booted the warp core. Check the computers. You should be able to apply the same logic to this one. If there's a manual, we can do it. Not a problem, sir. <laughs> okay. Um, well, let's see what you do digging through the computers there, Noel. Uh, roll me a... Um, roll me can a, I have computers? Let's see. Roll me reason plus engineering, please. Uh, difficulty of one. How about I give you a threat? I'll take that threat. Man, everyone... I start out with no threat. Everyone gives me threat. I now have lots of threat. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Just imagine if you had Demos. All the threat. <laughs> oh, jeez. And... I don't know. What do you think? Reroll that zero? Risk the complication? <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. yeah we could I, I like seeing more momentum. Yeah, yeah. Could be more momentum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so far two extra momentum, and let's see. Well, oh, jeez! Oh, nice. oh. So you get a uh, four momentum out of that roll. You're maxed out, I believe. We are max. We found a good manual, sir, on how to do the cold restart, and I think we got a really good head start now. Yeah. Not only did you find uh, the, or not only did you find the initial, or that the original documentation from uh, Charles Truck Tucker the uh, Third, you have found that apparently someone in the uh, Utopia Planitia may have been Moose, may not have been Moose, has uh, transcribed how to do this pre precise maneuver on a. You know, 200 year old or 200 year newer warp core. Uh, so roll me a daring plus engineering, with a diff with a difficulty of two, and the ship can assist. Uh, however, <clears throat> because you've given me some threat, uh, I will spend just only a couple points to increase the complication roll 18 to 20. I got the chip. Okay. okay. Uh, and I will okay. give you a threat and take. Two more momentum for that fourth die. Go for it. What's the ship rolling? Uh, ship is rolling engines plus engineering. I like to imagine that the name on the updated method is Montgomery Scott. That yeah, honestly, <laughs> probably makes sense. Gee, oh, no! Gee. Why? Oh, gee. <laughs> because I had bold engineering. Yeah, you can get rid of I'll yours. Zero. Yeah, you can reroll yours at least. The, the ship crit failing is that one stays. Because apparently I can't roll dice tonight. Uh, yeah, it's the thing by Montgomery Scott with three T's. <laughs> <laughs> His nickname is Scooty. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. It's Welsh. Scooter. Welshy. It's Welshy. <laughs> Welshy! <Ooh. laughs> Futurama. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, I have an idea for that complication. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm at a terminal. <laughs> Oh, oh no. no! I'm just kidding. I've already taken five. I can't. I can't do any more. Yeah. yeah, you really should get to sick bay, and I'm surprised no one is counseling you to do so. But, anyways, uh, so the good news is you managed to cold boot the uh, uh, the um, engine. Usually the warp, or usually the plas, that, sorry, usually the fusion core needs to be started first to get enough um, baseline energy going to support and contain the matter antimatter. Um, reaction. However, the trip it and rip it, I believe, goes the other way around, where you have just enough energy to contain the first couple matter antimatter uh, reactions, which will then shunt all the excess power into the fusion core, boosting this, boosting the ship immediately. So, good news, it's powered up. Uh, the bad news is, is that the warp, the ship isn't going to go to warp anytime soon, because um, you've rolled a complication. I have to make it go somewhere. Yeah, and blew I'll... the transmission. <laughs> yeah, I'm also going to make notes on Welshie's notes on Commander <laughs> Tucker's initial comments. Yes. Uh, so uh, that... I... uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, for the fun of it, uh, there is a little explosion that happens in Engineer, and you see. Uh, Bud just flying down the corridor with a fire on top of him as his arms flying around. He's doing a little R2-D2 scream. Yep. 
if Zach's was there, his beard would catch fire. But I don't believe Zach yep. is there. <laughs> so instead, um, Kelso's Mad's beard catches on fire. But it's not really a beard, so it's not quite the same. But yeah, the, the ship vibrates, um, backfires a couple times, but eventually powers up. Uh, so the bridge comes alive with burps, chirps, whirs, and the lights come back to full power. Uh, Moore, your science console is still dead. You're on the auxiliary console. I'm on, like, the auxiliary of the auxiliary. <laughs> hey, Betty! Moose, this is Brass. Good news and bad news. Bad news first, good, followed by good news. We're not going to be going to warp in, anytime soon. That's the next thing we need to be working on, but we do have power. All right, good to know. All right, Betty. Hello. Yeah, good, you're here. Can you... Can you try and make contact with anyone out there? Any communications from any of the Federation buoys and relays? Tempting. And if someone wants to get Legos, uh, this will be a communications test. I'll um, take Legos. Sure. Uh, this is going to be a uh, control plus control plus engineering, control plus science. Let's roll control engineering, and the ship will assist with um, communications plus engineering. And this is going to be a difficulty of three. I suppose if you want to play Nyx instead and have her do the role, because I think that's her thing, but, you know. Yeah, let's do Nyx. Let's say Nyx is comms. No, oh, is she? <laughs> yeah, she's comms. Yeah. Nobody has a ship up. I have it up already. And I her... have it up, but I have it up, but uh, my rolling is not so well, so by all means, I, I, I let you. I'm on my downward slant already. Okay, and I've her... rolled two crit fails. You, you're still on the up and up for me. And then her focus I'll, of I'll, communication I'll systems pass, work? Yep. Okay. Concordia does well, and Nyx does well, too. So that's the, th the three successes you need. Uh, so, Nyx, you get the feedback. Um, there's actually... So, the bad... Oh, bah, sorry. So, a lot of the computer banks of the ship appear to have been accessed... Uh, very recently and downloaded. Uh, some of the more recent ones apparently have been deleted. Uh, communication systems are operational, but not able to get any response. Ooh. Can I, hearing this, can I try to recovery file some of the files that were deleted? Mm. Yes. Because let's can. be real, there, there's no such thing as a permanent deletion. Of course not. Yeah, defrag. Yep. With your rolls, I'm going to say no. <laughs> We've seen on CSI that they can recover deleted footage from a VHS tape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, didn't they, like, tape it back together? <laughs> they reversed magnetization and restored the footage. I'm like, that's not how it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. Welcome okay. to CSI. Anywho. Uh, roll me a daring plus engineering roll, I believe. Daring plus All engineering, right. ship will assist with uh, computers plus engineering. This is going to be a difficulty four. Okay. Well, ship's assisting, so test technical expertise, I get a reroll. Mm -hmm. uh, does computer focus count? Why, yes. Yes, it does. All righty. Um, Do you want to be snatching I'm... up some of that momentum? Yes. I'm going to do three. For two extra day. Nice. Said, what was it? Engineering and uh, engineering. Daring engine. Yeah, daring engineering. Daring engineering. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. Nice. See, I love it when a um an officer works well with the ship. That's the four successes. Uh, so, more. it's going to take a while um, pulling data back together from uh, all the different archives and re or unscrambling some scrambled up bits hiding in 
all the digital dust bins in this system. It's basically you going through the recycling bins of several individuals' folders and trying to piece together what happened. So it's going to work, but it, it will take a bit of time. So I, much Frangie porn, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, I can't believe you've been watching this. No, it's Zax's. Oh, that's, that, that, Load's that's gone wild. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the images that just went through my head that shouldn't have. Anywho. Uh, I love you all. I love you all. Okay. <laughs> uh, Reinhardt will just look over as Moore is like beat red right in the face going, Oh, God! <laughs> okay. <sighs> So, more. it will take some time for you to figure everything else out, um, but you're able to reconstruct at least the first f uh, few minutes of the dis deleted data from uh, sensor logs, uh, personnel files, and all that other fun stuff. Uh, the USS Concordia entered the uh, Belea Triad system as scheduled. You detected a massive gravity well in between all three suns. And in an attempt to investigate, uh, the ship was hit with a massive tractor beam, uh, attempted to fight. Red alert was declared. Uh, weapons were fired. But all for naught, apparently. And at the moment, that's what you have. No visual record, no record of what pulled you in. Or what was causing the gravity well. And a science officer, the... you do get one free question. Well, I'll put all the record up on the view on the main viewer, so like we can see kind of a series of events. Um, seeing as I have astrometrics as a focus, and it's something that more enjoys, would he have picked up any strange anomalies in any of the scans prior to entering the system that would? possibly explain something no um what you other than these the, the three suns in an equilateral equilateral triangle rotating around each other uh the first thought was a miniature black hole that had somehow gotten all three suns to in its uh in its event, orbit. Horizon. event horizon thank you but uh so but until you got close enough to use short range sensors because that you know, long-range sensors work just by analyzing subspace resonance of various events, um, because subspace travels faster than regular sense. But your short-range sensors far more detailed. So long-range sensors didn't have much to go on, but the short-range sensors is what picked up the gravity, the you know more detailed scan of the gravity well. Okie dokie. More is gonna is as well as. Uh, keep collecting the data that he can piece together. He's going to start relooking at a scan, like triple checking to make sure he didn't miss something. Okay. All right. Well, while we figure that out, we're going to cut back to the other group. So this is good. All right. So. Oh, nope. That's the old one. That's not it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. Ah. There we are. Okay, uh, so Finnell and Hadrix, you have just seen or had a first encounter with what might remain of the planet's natives. Okay, this is very interesting. Tegan is an uh, uh, engineer, correct? And yeah, he has transporters, but also has small craft as a focus, so. Ah, excellent. He was built with that. I haven't even added that. Okay, I got an idea. Uh, can we regulate some power to the outside and send an electric charge through the uh, hull? Ooh. Quite possibly. I also have power systems as a focus. Excellent. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That sounds good. I have, I have jerry rigging, so let's do this. <laughs> but Alarak chimes up. But don't think we are available energy reserves. We only have 46 hours as it is. 
Yes. He's a Kelpian, so he's high strung. That's true, but we if we're on an M class planet, that means we could possibly get solar well, old fashioned solar panels for a solar cell to regenerate some of that. Yeah, at this point, we need to figure out what these things are and see how many more are around the ship. I'm scrubbing through the, the scans that we pulled up, trying to find some link. Okay. Okay, so it sounds like you have a immediate plan for survival. So if uh, Mr. Teagan could please roll me a probably daring plus engineering roll. And small craft, power systems, anything like that would work. Uh, this, the ship can assist with structure plus, yeah, structure plus engineering. And this is going to be a difficulty of one. Uh, no, sorry, difficulty two. I'm going to go ahead and assist. Okay. All right, Tegan got the two. Runabout says, nope. Right about got nothing, but that's enough. Ooh. 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 Very nice for now. Uh, nice. That would be nice. Uh, sadly, only one person can assist, so the ship ship got oh. first. Sorry, Fenil. I assume you're in the middle of the uh, uh, cockpit with the... The zombie. With the zombies and just y shouting orders to some to help you. Thankfully, Tegan, you're on the case. And shock the zombie into unconsciousness. The tapping stops... As the body loses all cohesiveness, dances around for a smidgen, and then slumps onto the uh, still cracked winch screen. Can I take one of the tricor? Uh, sorry, orders in. Yeah, you uh, can. You scan can. to see. Who... Can I take one of the tricorders and, or one of us take one of the tricorders and scan and see if we can see how many is around the ship? Easily. Uh, this is going to be a insight medicine test uh, with a difficulty of one. Actually, it's a diffi I'm difficulty two, no. sorry, just because of the um, situation. situation. Uh, Tegan has a whole ten. Uh, for Lisa, maybe? Might be a better choice, just thinking. Or Alarak. Or, yeah. Let's see, and this is what task again? life sign scanning for life forms oh yeah i could do that yeah alarx medicine too i have a medicine of five and it's uh what attribute um bio scans life signs uh sensor operations that sort of thing oh uh, i guess i'm i'm asking like is it reason oh. insight oh sorry uh insight plus medicine okay uh did you say I'm sorry, I'm tired tonight. Uh, did you say xenobiology would be a focus that worked? Uh, yes, actually, I'll say that it is in this instance. Okay. In that case, and it was what difficulty? Difficulty two. Okay. I don't think I need any extra dice here. You don't. That is four degrees of success. Huzzah. Okay. So, congratulations. Um, you see several. Uh, life signs approaching the ship. They're all sort of, they're all moving very slowly. Their life signs are very faint. And for a few yeah. seconds, you're trying to figure out why they're so faint. And then you realize that the life sign isn't actually humanoid. It is, it's a, it appears to be, well, it's not a humanoid life sign you're seeing. Hmm. Huh. Uh, I'm detecting several humanoid life signs uh, heading towards our ship. But there's one that's not, which is concerning. Uh, no, sorry, my apologies. Um, you're not reading humanoid life signs at all. These life signs are non-humanoid. Oh. So, okay. So is there... Wait, so there's two separate non-humanoid life signs now? Several, Is that what you're saying? several separate non-humanoid life signs, yes. Okay, got it. Uh, 
reading several non-humanoid life signs, uh, heading towards the ship. That's nice. Probably got attracted by the sound of the ship, cr you know, crashing into the planet. Probably. <sighs> okay, how do we deal with this? How do we deal with this? How much oh. power do we still have left? Oh, the shock was minuscule. It's So instead of 46, you're down to about 45 hours. So we know shocking could disrupt them, but we don't know how m exactly how many are out there. If we use the ship to move, we don't know if that movement will cause them to be attracted to what we're doing. Plus, we just need to figure a way to get ourselves safe and then be able to get ourselves repaired so we can possibly get off the planet. I'm working on the repair stuff. Hmm. Has Alarak been able to figure out anything Xenorch, anthropology, archaeology, or exosociology wise from any of the scans or anything? Good question. Um, roll me a... Thank you for reminding me. Uh, roll, Please roll me a... Reason plus science, and this will be a uh, exosociology, sociology stuff like that. This will just be a difficulty of one. And I'll take a uh, momentum for a third die. Go for it. <clears throat> Christmas. Okay. Yeah, red, green, and white. Woo oh. Well, it's a good thing you took that extra dice. Uh, so you get one yeah. momentum. And I'm just going to bank threat for that. Uh, so Alarak, going through your... or compiling a list of information based... Uh, that all the other species had on the Chis, on a species known as the Chisir. Uh, the Chisir Republic had been operating in... had been living in the fringes of the Lissai Expanse. And... Since your the ah, since Starfleet's arrival in this area two years ago, most everyone has given them a bit of a wide berth because they were going through a bit of a tumultuous civil war. Uh, about six or seven months ago, the most of the communications from the Chassir ceased. Um, everyone kind of just decided that their borders were still closed and they did not want interference. So for the most part, everyone just sort of left them alone. Um, given what you understand from uh, from references and documents and whatnot, it's possible they've gone mad. And that's not crazy mad, it's mutually assured destruction mad. And instead of using it as a deterrent, it was used as it's being used. You know, it only takes one wackadoodle with keys to the biogenic, you know, launch controls, or however the species did it. Mmm, lovely. Yeah. Well, it looks like we have to deal with a planet of people that have basically wanted to obliterate each other. Lovely. I mean, well, the same disease these people have been infected with is what's infected the captain. If we want to formulate some sort of cure or otherwise, we might need a sample from one of these things. Well, we currently have one of the hull. Yep, I was about to say that. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Sorry. Whenever, whenever I ran, whenever I ran the scans of those life signs in terms of them approaching the ship, mm -hmm. about how long did it seem it would be? T it would take for them to get there. Um, we're not talking. F they're not, you know, f the fastest individuals on the planet. You probably have about, you know, five-ish minutes or so to head outside if you want to risk outside. Or Give you me can, the hyper uh, yeah, um, 
I'll yeah, for Leeds is gonna strap on an EVA suit, uh walk onto the hall real quick and uh get any amount of samples they can get from the individual that is sort of just uh unconscious on her hall right now, just get tissue samples, blood samples, etc. Okay, so I don't think we should risk you going out there. Well, is the commander or Finnell going to stop him? I'm, as I said, give me the hypo spray. I'll go. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> okay. And I'll just hand Finnell the, the hypo spray. Aw. And I just got and I just got your token in place too. I know. <laughs> yeah. But they're they're chief of security, and I'm not gonna well on this ship. <laughs> yes. So I'm not gonna try and not argue with them too much. <clears throat> okay, Fennel. Just because I think it's amusing, what sort of samples are you going to try and grab? Well, I'll get DNA, and I'm going to use my phaser and lop off an arm. Oh my god! Oh, fuck! All right, yeah, sure, that'll work. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Finnell, you make your way out there. You, you know, fill up a canister of hypo spray, and you go to lop off uh, an arm, and you just realize there's very little holding this arm in place, anyways. So you just sort of rip and apply a little bit of force, and the whole thing just <laughs> disintegrates. Was like. Uh. <laughs> kind of like popping off the um, like drumstick off of a turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh, I don't need that imagery. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fennel, you do notice a slightly disturbing sight as you uh, separate. Before the... I take off his arm? Or no, after you take off, off his arm. arm. Oh, okay. Well, okay. More disturbing sight is <laughs> there are several small tendrils that appear to reach out to the arm as you pull it away from within the skin. But as soon as they realize that, uh, as soon as they're exposed to the atmosphere for too long, they shrivel up and uh, disintegrate. Okay. Fair enough. Any way I can, like, are, are, like, are they, like, a, is it like a worm and it crawls back in? Or it's, it's like they a just... Sorry, I interrupted. I do that a lot. I'm sorry. Um, okay. It's like a lizard's tail, where it can just sort of shed off the tip of it, and it just falls off if it's nipped by a predator or something like that. Oh, okay. So Fair enough. There, there is a little bit of shriveled up tendril, if you want to bring that back too. I'll grab the shriveled off tendril while I'm grabbing the arm and the uh, hypo spray of uh, genetic juices. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I come back and I'm like, hi, waving the hand. <laughs> okay. Um, I. <laughs> and for Lisa just has their hand over their mouth. Tegan I... actually laughs. Hey, I mean, <laughs> does he like chuck the arm at for Lisa? <laughs> no, I'm waving at you with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's like, yeah, just... All right. Uh, would we have anything on board this shuttle where, like, uh... God, this just... I'm just making this more morbid. But, like, could I do, like, uh... Autopsy? Is there, like, some kind of case I can put this thing in? Or... Yeah, there's... The captain is lying in a in a uh, auxiliary bio bed, so okay. yes, I will assume that there is a very 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 basic uh, medical, you know, enough for a bare bones medical response. Okay, I'll put this arm in a case, and uh... well, I guess the first thing I'll do, uh, let's extract. The uh, captain's current uh, DNA structure, uh, and I'll take some of the stuff from the hypo spray that Finel so kindly got me, along with the arm, and uh, sort of compare the two, see if there's some sort of like rate of degeneration I can find, or 
Okay. Anything of that sort. Sure. Uh, this is going to be a reason plus medicine test. Um, infectious okay. diseases, exobiology, stuff like that. Um, because this uh, it would typically be difficulty four. However, because of your exobiology or your quick study talent, I think it is, yeah, it buddy. becomes difficulty three. Uh, okay. So you reason medicine. Anyone else can assist with reason medicine or the shuttle can assist with computers plus medicine. Let's see. Um, I will take a momentum for a third die. Okay. And I do have a focus. So, Kia. And there's, the, you already got the four successes you need. Yeah, and that's actually, we actually need a momentum because yeah. it's three because yeah, of my quick study. Yeah, it was. Yeah, what's boy. Some, what is some, do we have anybody trained? Well, we, we have Thursday. Yeah, we have Mr. Day, uh, who's more a counselor, but I think his medicine score is still good. Or yeah, we have the medicine ship. score is still decent. Um, I would trust Thursday more than the runabout shuttle to get this done. Uh, she does not have any focuses. That's fine. Like, and her medicine is more like, you know, psychological medicine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. You're still helping. <laughs> You're. I'm making you help. Doctor's orders. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? So, reason medicine? Uh, reason medicine, yes, please. Okay. And don't have a focus. Nope. <laughs> that's okay. That's the worst <laughs> that could happen. I, nope, that's okay. I have parent figure. We can ignore that complication. Aww. Uh, uh, oh, so it's a uh, it's female. My apologies, Miss Day. Miss um, <laughs> Day attempts to assist, but for Lisa, you realize that just because she's a doctor doesn't mean she's your type of doctor. Uh, All right. <laughs> also, yeah. And evil medicine. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, still, uh, you're able to discern a few things. Uh, the first is that. Basically, what you're seeing is a biological decay of a corpse that, if it was just left out in the sun for too long, mm. eh, roughly, I'm not, I've never actually looked up how long it takes a body to decompose in the sun, because quite frankly, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but I'm going to say roughly three months of exposure, or general decay. Um, well, this is going to be a fun thing to put in my Google search history. Hold on. Depends on humidity and if there's any scavenger type creatures, insects, animals. Yeah. Um, but if it's been dry, then it's going to be more mummy. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Closer to mummified. How long does it? <laughs> uh -huh. I'm going to be on a watch list over the... after this, but it's fine. I don't know. I don't think you're Dude, a people. top priority right now. Uh, meanwhile, you're also able to see. Actually, oddly enough, you're right on the money. <laughs> wow. In the intense sun, the body's mummified pretty quickly within about three months. Okay. Yeah, so it's decomposing, rotting, mummifying, something along those lines. Roughly three three months or so. Looks like angry beef jerky. Yeah. Or on Oh, God. Uh, angry beef jerky. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what you're also interested... What's more interesting is the the parts that are not part of the body, well, not parts of the initial, the actual anatomy, it appears to be some sort of hyper intelligent or hyper flexible neuromuscular uh, skeleton, or not skeleton, neuromuscular system. It's like, hmm. you know how um, your nervous system, you know, carries things from one end of your body to the other in microseconds? Yeah. Think of them like they're it's like that except the core except it's roughly as thick as a uh, maybe a USB cable oh, and shit. pure and is um prehensile. Huh. Hmm. And you said this isn't like the muscle structure of this yeah. thing. Yeah, it's running along the bones. Bones. Okay. Of this almost thing. like it's so I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm I'm almost thinking like it's kind of like how uh. They say in your, like, dying moments, you become, like, stupid strong for some reason. Yeah, you... you it's kind of like... It's, yeah. I get those kinds of vibes. Mm -hmm. 
Huh. Going back to the captain, uh, you are able to see uh, a small... Uh, well, it's only been an hour. You don't see that yet. Never mind. Go ahead. Carry okay. on. Okay. So I do see... <laughs> So I do see some form of degeneration in the captain, but it's not nearly as obviously not nearly as far as the other D and D's DNA no. sample. His body is still strong, still fighting back. Which reminds me, uh, Captain Bashir, can you please roll me a fitness plus medicine test? Oh sure. And I'm not going to tell you the difficulty, but here's a hint: it's rather high. Seven. <laughs> uh. watch, watch him passes, and then just like. Oh, guys, I'm fine. And we're like, all right, well. <laughs> Commander Hadrick it was just Rona. Yeah. <clears throat> it was space Rona. <laughs> uh, See, guys, heart. this zombie disease isn't that bad. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's weird. Hmm? It's got kicked out of roll 20. As oh, that's, going on. <laughs> that's interesting. Anyways, um, I have your sheet. I will roll. Do you oh, want good. momentum? Do you want me to spend momentum or anything like that? That that would be okay, and I'm okay. sure I got something that I I gotta gotta have something there. Uh, not really on the way of uh, focuses. Please <laughs> something. Indorian Sonata. <laughs> Fitness plus medicine. How how Just many extra, how many extra dice do you want? I'm sure like the uh, temporal mechanics works. Um, <laughs> uh, just give me an extra die. Okay. I'm not going to waste our. Okay. Oops. Um, oh, why did I only roll, roll one. one? I didn't mean to roll one. I wanted to roll th three. Uh, sorry about that. Mulligan. Apparently, I'm not good at rolling character rolls. Okay, I'm up. So, what am I doing? Daring. Uh, fitness, no, med fitness medicine. Fitness medicine there. to. Two more rolls or two more d20, please. No, no focus. <clears throat> oh, that's the two successes. That's okay. Hey. Yeah. Yep. That. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Captain. That means it's not okay, guys. <laughs> uh. It's not okay. It's not okay. But on that note, we are going to have a scene change and we go back to the USS Concordia. Actually, nope. Sorry. One last roll is for Tegan uh, to work on the ship. Um, Yay. This is just going to be... It's not really an extended task because there's no real work track. I mean, you could put a work track. I could I put a work activated, track. I haven't activated him so I could do... Was it in the nick of time? Is the I'm... extended task one? Uh, yeah. There's that, and there's a Miracle Worker. Miracle Worker is probably the one that I want. Yeah, it's more or less just keeping the ship as it is instead of letting it degrade further. Uh, so I'm not going to put a work track on this. This will just be a series of tests. Okay. Um, so this is going to be a Control Plus Engineering. Uh, this will be a difficulty of three. And the ship... <laughs> Excuse me. The ship can assist with structure engineering or engines engineering. Um, I'm assuming power systems won't yep. work. That's right. Will work? Of course. Okay. Um, then I'm going to give myself cautious engineering. Cool. Just to be on the safe side, and give myself a third die. I got the ship up. Go for it. Ooh, nice work, Tegan. Night work, not nice work, runabout. But then again, it's a small craft, so you got to do what you got to do. Okay, Tegan, you got the three successes you need uh, in order to preserve whatever uh, power is left in this. You're able to keep the ship at as it is and prevent it from getting in any worse condition. Uh, outside, the temperature reads a balmy uh, 30, uh, 33 degrees Celsius, which I believe is about 95-ish degrees Fahrenheit, with a humidity of about 10. It's nice and sunny, and the zombies are out in force. <laughs> but So it's Florida. I, yeah. With less humidity. <laughs> And one of my antenna just fell off. Calcium <laughs> change. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. 
And see, change takes away a moment. It does indeed. Commander Moose. All right. So now, Mark, can we get a scan on the surrounding area? Where are we exactly? Uh, let's. Now that we have power back, let me try. Last time it came back as null. All right. So this is going to be uh, well. What are your most often rolled things? Insight plus science. Ship can now assist with sensors plus science. This will be a difficulty and of two. Science. And I have a reroll with tech technical expertise. Uh, sensors as a focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, four successes. Ooh. That is, I believe, two momentum. <laughs> All right, so you are, you are in a cavern. Roughly the size of yeah, something uh, approximately 200. Let's see, what's the diameter of the moon? Diameter of the moon is that. Roughly 1,000 kilometers uh, in diameter. Uh, sensors cannot penetrate beyond it, but your, um, your sensors are reading a material that is only has been recorded on two separate occasions. One was from the USS Nighthawk early in its trip into the Lasai Expanse when it was uh, ambushed by what they called the Starship Trapper. Basically a large giant sphere with a large tractor beam. They never did find the, ini er, the uh, initial inhabitants or what it was doing, but that's pretty much what it was. Hmm. As soon as I'm assuming, as soon as I get the scan back, like that file pops up is like related. Yeah, it's it's in your um cor cor ah, corollary corollary yeah, correlating uh logs. It's in a it's in a it's a footnote. And more just classified, and then face. also says like fuck from the captain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More just face palms. Commander. What's the news? That's not good. No. Judging by the related uh, search, we are inside a very large cavern. Sensors cannot penetrate outside of it. But what we're coming up is pinging uh, search results from the Nighthawk on the Starship Trapper. Starship Trapper. I put the I send the file over to Moose's console. Hang on one second. I have a picture here somewhere. I realize I didn't put this in a in a handout. So this is what it looks like, except the Ooh. size, except the size of a small moon. Hmm. It had. And how did it? Uh... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, how did the Nighthawk get out of it? Uh, let's see. How did the uh, the Nighthawk w was, or the crew was conscious during it during the time that the Nighthawk was brought in, and they were able to actually in infiltrate the sphere and deactivate the power supply before the ship was fully brought in. Uh, in this instance, whoever was controlling the sphere decided to preempt against such a thing as conscious crewmen. <laughs> I wonder why. Um, Mort, can you launch a bunch of probes in a bunch of different directions, see where they hit? Probe barrage, got it. Ooh. And map out their uh, impact points. I want to get an interior idea of the space. Ooh, cool. Um, I think this might be the first time I have you roll a daring plus science test. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's go with that. Uh, daring plus science, the ship will the ship or Lagos could assist with, I guess sensors plus science or Lagos could assist with control plus security since this is sort of weaponish related. One or the other, whoever wants to assist can. Well, if the ship assists, 
I have technical expertise, so I have a reroll. Um, the ship is shooting at a 13, and it would have a focus because it's the ship. Mm -hmm. Lagos probably wouldn't have a focus unless they had targeting systems. That would work. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember what Lagos has. Can you use your Christmas gift and uh, he can moral support? <laughs> I don't think that was the time for that. <laughs> um, well, let me see what Lagos has. Um, he has teamwork as a focus, actually. Oh, I'll let that work. What's uh, what work? would he have? He, uh, control security? Yeah, control security for him. He's shooting for 14. All right. Focus. Yeah, he's doing better. All right. Then it's difficulty. Difficulty three. of. Difficulty of two, really. Two. Okay. Sensors or computers is a focus on more? I'd say so, yes. Okay. There's two for more. What um, does uh, Legos get? Control. Security. The focus. Haha! -ha. Nice! That's two more momentum for you guys. Man, it's like you guys get the momentum, the other guys use it. Man, I'm liking this relationship. Okay. It's a love hate. Yeah. So, um, you use all the probes in your launch bays. Um, let's see how many probes that is. Let me see. Um, you use all 40 probes. Uh, <laughs> over the course of a couple minutes, more your when you order down to the uh, science team to launch a probe, they're like, which one? And you reply, yes. All the probes. Yeah. Uh, they're fired off in all directions, pretty much confirming what the uh, sphere is, or what the sensors uh, initially reported. It's pretty much the cavern is a spherical in shape. Um, there is on to the aft of the ship uh there is it's only a, it's only about a meter or two of a de deformation but it's there uh roughly the prox it's about 200 meters or so in diameter uh it's sort of like a it's like a padded sphere but one of the spheres isn't or one of the areas isn't padded I make note of that. Are we catching any place that would be like the door where we came in? Uh, if that is your free question, then that yes. was pretty much the deformation would be your best guess at the moment. Commander, well, we're in a big old sphere. There is a small deformation that I've found off one of the scans that's my best guess on the entry point although it's not necessarily big enough for the ship it's a it's a starting point understood lagos prepare oh, what's the new again a class one should be the lowest yield tricobalt torpedo Ooh. Okay, if you're going to use that, you're going to give me threat for it. Oh yeah, you know this is just this is just to just get set up. Okay. Oh, Lieutenant Nix, open up channels, wide band. Let everyone hear this. Will do. That's. I'm not even going to have you roll for that. So yep, open and prepared. This is the USS Concordia. To whoever has brought us into this to make communications. Are you able to respond? Uh, you get no response. Very well. 
Please let it be recorded that we made attempts to communicate. Failure to respond leads me to believe this is an automation system. We will be then forced to use all of our weapons at our disposal to free this vessel. If there are any individuals out there, and if you do not wish to be vaporized, please communicate now. Mm. Sorry, drop them. Uh, roll me presence plus command. Uh, if you have intimidation, that would be a good, th or something along those lines would work. Uh, this is going to be just a difficulty of two. Mm, I flex as I'm speaking, so full body work. <laughs> uh, no. no. Oh, God. <laughs> no. It's like that one yeah. player who used to try to say power systems worked for everything. <laughs> oh, Matic. Oh, Matic. Oh, Matic. Uh, I do the Carry Terry Cruise things. I'm flexing my pecs. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I, I will take a momentum for a third dice. Okay. Ba -ba -ba. Two. That's the two you need. Woo. We should be at four momentum now. You should be, yes. Well, um, everyone is shocked when you get a response. I answer it, of course. Oh, no, you don't get the choice. This thing just appears on <laughs> the ship. Uh, a small foot, four foot tall alien, uh, grays gray skin, large ovaloid head, and two uh, cups, the eye, cu two eyes the size of small saucers, uh, and gangly limbs that you're wondering how it even has muscles there. No clothing to speak of. Uh, sort of appears right behind Primrose, looks up at Reinhardt. Our analysis of you is incomplete. Hot engaging in hostilities would be ill-advised. What analysis are you trying to complete on us? On you. Everything else is extraneous. You are unique to this universe. We are analyzing why. Oh. You're noticing the low levels of temporal radiation, I admit, huh? Affirmative. In our... I got pulled... In our scans of two and two hundred thousand simultaneous universes, you are unique. We have. No. It is our purpose, or it is our mission, to seek out these uniqueness and examine. Peacefully, or do you expand, or do you uh, expect to dissect me? Once all information is given, is received, uniqueness must be purged. We seek uniformity across the multiverse. Purged, as in... Discarded. Eliminated. Well, I like existing, and I'm quite happy with the universe I'm in. Do you think you can stand up to the firepower of this vessel if we were to unleash it all? Including a warp core detonation? Damage would be sustained. However, your your ship is insufficiently armed to cause significant damage to this space station. Mm. How about subspace tears? Can you withstand that if one's ripped inside this vessel? Uh, he pauses. And he doesn't answer. And with that, he vanishes. All right, shields up. Logos, how high of a yield can we go with a tricobalt before it affects the vessel if we were to shoot that port? Mm. Uh, you guys have enough momentum. Uh, Lag Lagos, you know offhand that you can go up to level two 
it's enough to crack most asteroids wide open. And level three would be large enough to crack open a part of a uh, small moon, but would also potentially damage the ship. So in my head, we're in the center of this space station? That's a good assessment of the situation, yes. Okay, so if we're going to damage ourselves up while we're at the center, if we move back to one end, like the furthest distance we can go from that opening, and then launch, how's our safety then? Significantly increased. Hey, right, Lagos, prepare a tier three. Uh, when it's ready, fire that opening. Uh, Moore, you're noticing a significant increase on in the rave flashes. Uh, looks like they might be powering stuff up. Sir, we look like there's a power increase out there. Understood. All hands, battle stations. Uh, Noel, down in engineering, you're just patting yourself on the back for pulling the uh, rip and... What was it? The trip and rip? Yep. The trip and rip successfully. Now... Red alert's been called. And we can't move. Mm -hmm. We can move, it's just we don't have war power yet. Well, you guys gave me more threat, so part of that is a tractor beam attack is going to attempt to grapple the ship. So, oh, let's hello. see if I can do that. <laughs> well, the good... Um, the good news it gives is, us power. <laughs> uh, the good news is, is that you are grabbed by the tractor beam. Um, the bad news is, the complication is, you are able... Um, Lagos's sensors immediately detect where the tractor beam is coming from and identify all f other potential apertures for where tractor beams may come from. Ooh. Lagos will look at uh, uh, Moose. Permission to fire the phasers at all possible apertures to knock out all possible tractor beams? Granted. Once we're in position, Lagos, fire that tricobalt. Aye. Okay, uh, Lagos, please roll me a control plus security. Um, this is going, because you're doing a multi targeted spread, this is going to be base difficulty of, uh, let's see, base difficulty of four. And the ship can assist with weapon security. Alrighty. So it's control security. Um, focus of defense systems. We also have ship tactical systems, so really either one. <clears throat> um, I'm going to pop Lagos's uh, determination. Okay. Because he has sharpest shot on the ship. Wow, that's a mouthful. Yeah, try saying that five times fast. I'd rather not. No. As, For as the you, auto success. As you guys know, um, I have hard times just saying regular words. <laughs> um, he's also going to do two momentum for their die because he is cautious. Okay. Security. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. There's the four. Yep. There's the four you need. A series of photon torpedoes launch out of every single launch tube available and are guided by Lagos' extra expert hands. Well practiced in um you know We got a momentum back. Nice. In a decent or in uh providing a fine yet firm tactical control. <laughs> ten, ten photon wait, torpedoes later. <laughs> Ten photon torpedoes later, and all the tractor beam emitters are destroyed. Uh, Primrose, you are now free to move the ship. Okay, on it, and I'm just going to start flying the ship. Mm -hmm. Roll me a... Uh, I need uh, to fire the tricope out. Yes, yes you do. Well, I said, I said to fire that once we're in position. Yep. Right now, this is Primrose trying to navigate a straight line while basically being blinded by the entire... It's trying to find your way through a um, blizzard, not really knowing where 
the final wall is. Uh, can you? Please... Oh no, we should because we launched all those probes. You did. So we basically we made an impact network, so we know where everything impacted. Oh uh, yes. Okay. Um, so Primrose, roll me a control plus, or a control plus con test. This is only going to be yeah. difficulty one because you have a fairly good idea of everything. Uh, ship can assist with computers plus con. Would you say? that what I'm doing here requires precise maneuvering or there is a co collision risk Why, because of yes. where we're at? Yes, I would. Flying then that right. becomes a difficult... <laughs> then that makes it a difficulty zero. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh... I have one thing I want to do while this is all getting set. Sure. Um, bridge to engineering. I sir, engineering. There is one thing we can do to give us a second of warp speed. It's going to be a tricky thing, but I think he can do it. Do we have a manual? Kind of. There was an acting ensign that did a little maneuver that made it look like he disappeared. He was able to get warp drive without actually having proper dilithium. We don't have a way mm -hmm. to get warp drive stabilized now, but I think it's saturating the warp coils with enough energy, then triggering it should give us a burst. Uh... I think his name was Cruiser, Weston Cruiser. Would no. <laughs> I believe the Crusher. Might... Crusher. <laughs> yes, that's it. Weston and Crusher. We... <laughs> and we are now Captain Momentum as well. You are. Uh, so, uh, you currently have, I believe, what is that? Three. F so you have one floating momentum, I believe. By my math is right. You were at mm, we were at three before. Oh, because we got we got one from the uh, we got an assist from the ship. That's yeah. why. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So you are capped yeah. with one floating. Um, I will be kind and say that that could be made available to this particular role if you want, uh, which would be a daring plus engineering. Um, oh. Could we just spend that floating in one of the regular ones to use that to set it up? Oh, you just want to create the advantage of having a warp drive. Well, for this special maneuver oh. that Moose ah. is talking about. Sure. Okay, well, uh, create the advantage that you have the warp drive. And because I'm a magnanimous GM, I will say that the difficulty is lowered by one. Uh, so this is good. good. Okay. <laughs> uh, I so... think we have it all in place, sir. Okay, so the Tricobalt device... I... Our Legos reports that the Tricobalt device is launched and deployed. And with no tractor beams to stop it, it will happily uh, float aggressively over to its location and it will blow itself to smithereens. I just like the idea of like a, a cinematic shot. We see the ship in a wide shot at the edge of the screen and it launches and you just see the torpedo just without any sound. Mm -hmm, of course. And then all of a sudden a massive loud explosion <laughs> as it hits its target. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so now this is going to be a daring plus engineering test uh the ship can assist with um in this yeah engines plus engineering using a lot of engineering roles tonight cool um this would be a difficulty of four um well could i use my value of always something new ahead to pop my determination i'll let that slide All right, and and what's the difficulty again? Difficulty four. Two. I will give you two threat for a third die. Awesome. And our systems, quantum mechanics. Power, um, if you had drive, that would work better, I think. Um, mm, nope, I just have those two. Eh, neither of those would work, I'm afraid. You just got to push the Alien technology? No, not in this okay. case. It's not bullying, bullying, so. No. Well, that's There's still four. That's the four you need. Who's got the ship? Uh, I have it up. You said that was engines. Mm-hmm. 
Engines engineering? Engines engineering. Cool. Uh, you pray that you're reading. Uh, you're For once, you're not following a manual. You're doing everything the way that your boss said, suggested it should be done, and you're hoping for the best. You close your eyes. You hit the go button. Uh, prim. So, Reinhardt, yeah, you... Three things, or two things happen simultaneously. Uh, Legos reports that there is barely, that the Cobalt device has exploded, and he is seeing enough, um, or a hole large enough for us to fit through, just barely. Um, and you get a call from Noel on the bridge, or on an engineering, saying that your, that the engines are ready for one warp drive, or one warp jump. Hit it. Primrose? Hitting. Hitting it. You hit it, and in a burst of... Uh, in a move that is not recommended by anyone. Seriously, no one. It's not out there in any manual under do this. You burst free of the sphere. And find yourself in the Balea Triad. Uh, pay no attention to the various scaling. Everything is slightly askew, naturally. You see there's a small explosion on a size on a sphere the size of a small moon, and through it streaks the USS Concordia. It's only a, it's a warp jump just long enough to for the computer to realize, oh crap, we're in a gravimetrically unstable part of space. I am stopping this, otherwise we'll tear ourselves apart. But you're free. And with that, we are going to cut ourselves back to... Uh, actually, um, nope, let's do this once and then we will take a quick break. Let's go back to the interior. So it's been a couple hours. Uh, Captain Bashir, if you could please roll me another fitness medicine test. This is going to be a difficulty three. Can we use the Paladin's Lay on Hand ability? Oh, wait, never mind. Wrong game. <laughs> nice. Oh, look at that. Ah. Uh, you, uh, you see Captain Bashir struggling. Uh, you actually get one momentum out of that, so that brings you up to capped. Uh, you see Bashir uh, struggling and sweating, but his Andorian physiology is must be tougher than these uh, Chasir. Uh, he's actively fighting it. Uh, for Lisa, your monitoring system shows that there is a small growth tumor uh, beginning to grow in his... I believe it's the Abdullah Oblongata, or the part right above the spinal column. Oh, good. Um, Might need to do some brain surgery. Love that. Commander Hadrix. Uh, actually, yes. actually, Tegan, you're you're the one working on the small craft stuff. Uh, Tegan, you're noticing something on the runabout's uh, communications array. Uh it appear something is on repeat. Uh, it's very low. Or it's operating on the um, uh, the uh, I believe it is the uh, the VH the very high frequency modulation. Whatever modulation AM radio runs on, it's running on that. Um, oh, okay. Which is typically not used by modern day, you know, Starfleet era technology, but it's on this one. Which it's is like why the equivalent of a ham radio. Yeah, basically. There's a ham radio out there somewhere. Might just be high frequency. Either way. What can I do to clear it up to get a uh, get the message? Uh, this is going to be a control plus engineering t test. Uh, you're already Actually, you're already capped on momentum. That would have been a difficulty one roll. I'm just going to say you do it. Okay. Um, it's on... There's a message that appears to not be on repeat. As in, someone is actively talking. A quick run through the um, Universal Translator. Help. 
if anyone is if anyone from the just from the republic is out there i don't care which side we're poisoned help food is almost out assistance please we're in the dela 4 resort help us please there's children commander yes I'm getting an active transmission. An active transmission. What did they say? Somebody asking for help from a resort. It's coming through on very primitive radio frequencies. But it's transmitting out, saying that they're sick, poisoned. There's children. That's all I'm getting. Well, potentially they might be able to help us out as we help them. Um, Mr. Tagan, do you think we can get the ship up and moving? Oh, with the crack in the uh, windshield, I wouldn't take it out of atmosphere. Oh no, of course not. No, 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 no. We want to. We'll uh, keep it. We'll keep it um, as close to. Ground keeping is possible. I don't know how much of the power reserves we're going to have to be able to do it, but if we can... It's possible. Do we know how far this place is? Uh, I will say Alarak knows that based on... Uh, I think Alarak is female. It's hard to tell with Kelpians. And at least generic Kelpian tokens. Right. Uh, Alarak's male. Male? Okay, thanks. Uh, Alarak's... Um, yeah. Alarak, your um, knowledge has given you basic ideas of where this is. It's approximately a... Let's say... I'd say it's about a half continent away. So 400, 400 500 miles. You know, hop, skip, and a jump. But it will use a significant amount of your fuel energy reserves. We could get there, but we won't have much left of energy afterwards, sir. I can work on trying to get restore power systems and getting something back up and online, whether it's the micro warp core or if we can somehow harness to other power sources. But anything's better than staying where the zombies are. As if to uh, amplify your point, the mob has arrived and has begun banging on the hull. I think that does it. Let's set a course for the transmission. Let's try to do a single suborbital hop to try to get through there. Anybody that does not need to be in the cockpit needs to stay back here. So myself... I'm, I'm going to be up there and I'm going to pilot this. I just need somebody as backup. I can. You're going to need me there. to help do power systems. And I can fly a ship. All right. Everybody else stay here. We're going to move the ship. Alaric, I want to keep you um, nearby so that you can keep it. Um, help us hone in, hone in on the location. Sure, you don't want me in the back where it's safer? I want you back here and communicating with us via the communicator. Uh, communicator? Com yes, sir. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like Tegan and Hadrix are going up? Mm-hmm. Okay, and you guys are in your EVA suits, obviously? Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ferliza is down with the passenger. Um, I'm going in the cockpit in case uh, any of those things come in. A little bit crowded. We can fix that. There we go. Okay. So, the shuttle begins to spin up its drive. And if I could please have a control plus con test from Mr. Teagan. The runabout can assist with engines plus con, and this is going to be a difficulty of two. Actually, your dear commander is going to actually pilot the ship. Oh, okay. So the commander can roll um, 
uh, control plus con. Tegan could assist, or the shuttle could assist, whichever one wants. Uh, control con for me is a 13, with small craft as a focus. It would be what? Engines? Engines con for the runabout. Uh, be a 10 for the focus. I'd say let's go with Tegan, because I'm, I'm doing the same thing with 13. No focus, though. I have small craft as a focus, so kind of as a focus. Yeah, small craft would work as a focus. Haha. -ha. Nice. Also uh -huh. nice. Yeah. Uh, so you are capped on momentum already, and that is another two floating, so... If you want to create an advantage, that's pretty much the only thing you can do with it. Um, can I create the advantage to do with the power systems that we don't drain the battery completely? Ah, wise idea. Okay, so instead, very wise idea. Yeah, uh, instead of using up about the twenty or so hours I was planning, we'll just say that's cut in half. So, you you uh, you would use roughly ten. Per 10 hours worth of your survivable energy. But, you know. So, it's a classic uh, scene as the uh, as the ah, as Commander Hadrix runs the shuttlecraft uh, through. He plows it through a uh, horde of uh, horde of Chassir zombies. Knocking several of them off who have been hopelessly trying to cling on with degraded fingers. You're pretty sure some of them have left their limbs attached in death grips. Um, that might be make for an interesting medical autopsy. Um, but one up, one down will bring you to a much nicer part of the planet. The other side seem to have been fallen more into a rot and decay. And don't get me wrong, this part is also very rot, is very decayed. But there's something more artificial about it. And unlike the last time, this time your runabout actually comes in at a more controlled landing. Um, let me see. If it's... Nope, it does not land in a pool. <laughs> it lands in a large parking lot, crushing several um, luxury vehicles underneath its weight. Uh, despite them not having any sort of occupants for the last six months, several car alarms go off. <laughs> um, since, you've are, since you made the chest previously and know what to look for, uh, for Lisa, uh, by tapping into the shuttle's extraneous or sensor array, you do detect several of these non-humanoid life signs, naturally hmm. because of the appearance of your shuttle. They're all sort of now beginning to shamble towards you. Uh, you're also picking up ten actual humanoid life signs from within one of these, uh, from within one of the hotel condominium structures in uh, a bit distant. Commander, I'm picking up ten uh, living humanoid life signs in the in the left hand tower thing, whatever that is. In one of the two towers. Gotcha. Yep. <laughs> well, let's try to keep the ship defended against any of the incoming zombies, and let's see if we can do anything to, you know, help out these humanoids. Okay. And what is your suggestion there, Commander? My suggestion is we take. Hmm. We need to send out a small group. So in EVA suits, we've got about what three, four of them. I'll say that you have four EVA suits. I'm thinking myself, the doctor, Alarak, and uh, I think for now because we need we might need a uh, yikes. Let's smack the captain. We'll wake him up. <laughs> no, <I'm... laughs> I could just see you like. I would a... highly, 
I would highly suggest otherwise, Commander. This is like Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Bring him along, he'll be fine. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we need to yeah I'm, get. I'm so down with you taking my half dead corpse through <laughs> <Like not. laughs> to uh, an exciting like uh, resort planet. I'm so down with that. <laughs> no, or at least it's going to say hell no to that. Again, I think the doctor needs to stay here and work on this thing. Um, Alex says, do you think these EVA suits are big enough to fit somebody like me and I'd be safer back in the shuttle? I mean... They're modular. Oh. Well, it is a chance to learn more about this culture. Okay. Oh, oh look, it does fit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'm. Yeah, let's just let's get us, and we can keep um, Tegan here working on the energy issues. Okay, uh, yeah, sorry. No, uh, remi just remind me who's coming out. It's you, Ferliza, and Alarak. Anyone else? Yes. I would think you want security, <laughs> sir. <sighs> Yeah, I'm thinking that. It's like I'm more worried. I'm as worried about the ship too. Mm. Not defenseless. I mean, I've got a control security of thirteen, so if we need the pew pew stuff, I was gonna say I have a twelve, so I'm not terrible at it. If we need to, Alarex totally terrible at it. What, what's Hadrick sitting at for control security? Good question. Uh, 13. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> the Alaric staring in the, in the barrel of the phaser. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> nope. They go, no, not that way. Okay. Always, always downrange. <laughs> yeah, for Alaric, for Lisa, for Lisa, and the commander. We'll, all three of us will go, and then we'll everybody else will work on either... Um, keeping it on the captain, working on the energy issues, and keeping the shit all in one piece. Okay. That sounds like a good idea. Thurs just pulls up a beta pad and starts watching whatever the equivalent of Netflix is. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> she has no security. <laughs> Yay. That's okay, we're, we're, leave we're, leave we're leaving security with you. Okay. Tegan just grabs the Type 3. You'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, armed with EVA suits and... Or, no. Wearing EVA suits and armed with uh, what I'm assuming is Type 3 phasers. Because you've already given me threat for it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... There are a significant number of enemies making their way towards you guys. But they're very slow. Uh, so I'm actually I have some threats, so I'm just going to create a couple spend some threat for a couple more. There we go um, How this is going to work is very similar to regular combat except because they're literal crap um, You guys basically uh, You for every combat combat order, you know, it's you guys them you guys them you guys them and then when everyone's out You know we restart the round you guys get two actions in this round for each of their one if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, as always, good guys get to... I'm basically assuming that this is going to be a running gun kind of thing, as you are running and firing and trying to just chase, chase off the uh, horde. Which, once they realize that there's moving targets out there, they don't seem to really care about the shuttle anymore. And if folks from the shuttle have any interesting ways to assist, please butt in and let me know. But, in the meantime... We'll just good guys get I mean, to go first. What do you guys get to do? My go idea first. is shoot for the back of the deck because if a tumor is forming in the captain, and well, are they ahead of us or are they? They're sort of swarming from all sides. Well, 
I don't think we really have that option to be precise right now. Exactly. I'm going to go first. <laughs> I want to fire... I want to fire the phasers from the shuttle. <laughs> oh, I was wondering Jesus. if you do that. Into the horde. <laughs> okay, uh, that's going to use up a couple hours worth of energy, but hey, it'll be fun. So Right? Uh, roll me a control plus security, please. Uh, the ship will assist with weapon security, and this is a difficulty two. He has... Uh, it's quoted starship weapons yep that so, would do it okay all right runabout successfully assists as long as i can and fidel does all right you get one momentum while well, you're already capped nice. so you're basically one floating point but uh roll me however many challenge dice for that ship which i think is three okay Well, that if, for every for every point of damage, I was going to wipe two off the board. Um, so, I mean, five. we have three floating momentum. Oh, one we could momentum. we could just dump that into damage. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. The vicious. What is it? You can spend one for vicious. No, you can. I think you can just spend one momentum for straight damage. Well, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah you can do that. Because we have one floating momentum. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. I cleared your path, sir. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we we would find a way to spend that momentum where we just take all of them out. It's fine. Yeah. So, uh, Commander Hadrix, as you are running and gunning, you see a large shambling mob of these guys closing in from all sides. Uh, Finnell, uh, you receive a quick burst of communication to take cover behind the decorative fountains and the runabouts phaser arrays charge up in a spread and basically torch the entire parking lot <laughs> sadly they are yeah sadly because they are ship grade phasers they don't have a stun setting so they're all <laughs> basically incinerated but you're alive and the decorative uh, fountain has sadly also paid you know, tribute. Paid tribute. The ultimate price. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was a sexy, sexy uh, Chisir type mermaid, but it's gone now. Also, You're clear, but... sir. <laughs> <laughs> Let's proceed onward. Uh, while they're doing that, can I be, like, f trying to figure out how to restart the warp core? Go for it. Uh, control plus engineering. Uh, shuttle can assist with. Um, uh, oh, sorry, engines plus engineering, and because you are the small, that you are the um, flight control officer here, you can use your con instead of your engineering for these types of tests. Yeah, engineering's a five, con's a three. Really, ship, really. Fair. Um, okay. What's the difficulty? Uh, this will be a difficulty of a three. Okay. Um, actually, I'm no, going. I'm sorry, because of the power field, it was difficulty four. Okay. Um, I'm going to buy two dice. Okay. And power system or small craft is focus? Yep. And I have cautious, so I can at least reroll something of mine. Don't need to. Well, there's five successes. Nice! So you get one momentum. Uh, you also, sadly, do get a complication. Okay. Uh, let's... So, the complication is such okay. that... Your runabout's warp core is good for one jump. After that, you will use up whatever dilithium you have scraped together to get this thing jump started. But it's enough to get you at least somewhere. Icom, uh, Hadrix. Well, the core's back up and running. We have one jump worth of core there, but at least we it, it's producing power. Keep it in standby mode as much as we can. I want to make sure that when we need to use this one jump, it's there and ready. We can't take any chances. Understood. I'm going to see if I can fix the windshield. Sounds good. All right. And on that note, we are 
going to take our break. Uh, so let's be back in 10 minutes or so, so quarter to the hour. And we will see you guys soon. Alrighty. All right. Boop. And we are back. So, as Hadrix, Furliza, and Alarak enter their uh, futuristic hotel room, or hotel, the people who are making a, an emergency checkout from their accommodations. <laughs> Moose. The USS Concordia has just uh, ejected itself from the uh, alien sphere. Your computer, your computer stopped the warp drive short because it cannot calculate a safe warp jump within uh, this uh, solar system of three suns that are being held in place by what appears to be a gravity well created by this thing. Lagos, prepare another tricobalt, yield four. Have it ready. And if we were to go unconscious again, set up so the computer would auto-fire it. Next, open up communications. All right. Oh, uh, sorry, scene change. You lose one momentum. Uh, communications is are open. This is the USS Concordia. Alien vessel. You had hauled us inside of your sphere, and now we're free. Do you continue to wish to be aggressive towards us, or do you think we can talk? If you think that, that the weapon we deployed to get out was something that we only had one of, we have much stronger capabilities. Uh, roll me a presence plus command test. Uh, th this will be a uh, difficulty of three. Okay. Uh, I'm going to snag a momentum just for an extra dice. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay. Determination. Yeah. Mm, no, no. Okay. Um, so, Moore, Com as your... Communications get garbled? <laughs> <laughs> no, the communications get heard. Um, Moore... And Noel, who is probably keeping an eye on things from engineering. Both of you are noticing a spike in chroniton and um, neutrino emissions coming from the ship. It begins to punch a hole through reality. And in doing so, it's creating a massive, or it's creating a black hole in its wake. And the three suns begin to draw closer. So uh, we gotta get out of here. I'm not talking slowly either. All right, get us out here at maximum speed, as best as we can. On it. Daring plus con, please, Primrose. And yes, this is an environmental challenge. Uh, as, by one. Huzzah. Yeah, uh, this would have been difficulty of four, but now this is just difficulty three. Uh, ship will assist with engines plus con. Actually, no. In this instance, ships will assist with computers plus con, because you're trying to pilot a safe warp or a safe speed out of here. Um, would you say this also requires precise maneuvering, or there's a collision risk here because we have three suns coming towards us now? I'd say that's a pretty good thing, yes. Okay, so that reduces it down to two. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to spend some of that juicy threat you guys keep giving me to increase complication range, 18 to 20. Okay, uh, I'll pop her determination of nobody beats me in space. Okay. And 
Uh, let's see. Hazard avoidance and helm operations apply here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The suns do count as a hazard. <laughs> All right. And focus. There's the two you needed. Let's check. And that zero is not a complication. So ah, there we go. I should have spent one more threat. Okay, so that is four successes, so we net two momentum, actually. Yes, indeed. So two more momentum back. Uh, view screen aft shows the uh, sphere crack uh, opening a hole in this universe, uh, similar to what it would look like if you threw a ball through a piece, a chunk of glass, or maybe a ball bearing. That way the glass stays intact, but there's these spider cracks. And it falls through it, vanishing. The cracks reheal itself, leaving a black hole and three large suns. Still on a collision course. But thankfully, that is not your concern anymore. I just realized I moved the space background and not the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Although we need to get out of here because when ah! they collide... Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and... When they collide, we have a stellar shockwave. Yes. Uh, so, more. this might be the first time you are privileged to watch a trinary stellar implosion or collision of this magnitude at this range. Uh, so you, you're busy, you know, while everyone else is panicked for their life, you just hit the record all verbose mode, and you'll sift through the data later. Somewhere deep in your subconscious, get samples. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we were panicking at a previous disco. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, a, a wide cinematic shot of a massive shockwave equivalent to several supernovas of energy releasing destroying everything in its path and healthily just on it. you're just the ship just sort of flies towards the camera banks slightly to the left and up and within a few hours noel you are able to get warp drive back online properly this time By the book. Yes. The book's the only way to fly. Uh, Nix, uh, now that you're, you know, clear and all that, you're you're picking up a distress call from the planet Gan. It appears to be that of the captain's runabout sending an automated uh, distress beacon on repeat. Commander, we've got a... A distress call from our own runabout. Understood. Stay in the course. Make best speed possible with what we can do. Aye, right, sir. And you guys pop into oblivion. You guys breach the uh, light speed barrier roughly the same time that the away team breaches the safety and sanctity of the hotel. If I had thought about this ahead of time, I would have prepared a nice sci-fi interior, you know, very similar in luxurious to the, uh, oh wait, that's the wrong group that did the Orion heist. Um, it's a very fancy interior. Everything is uh, marble, quartz, lovely uh, filigree all over the place, lovely scenic shots, you know, five-star classy hotel. The, the It's only marred by signs of a prolonged struggle uh several completely dead uh chassir lie on the floor both from both decayed remains and those that appear to have died during well fighting them uh for lisa your uh your scans would have indicated that these our occupants would have been on the 10th floor and unless you tell me differently right. you'll yeah, I'm sure we're proceeding there. Mm -hmm. uh, as this you reach... Is... Sorry? Uh, sorry, no. I was going to say, this place is five-star in the Klingon guidebook. This is a good place to die. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, well, probably past tense, but yes. Um, naturally, the uh, <laughs> elevators are no longer functioning, so it's to the stairs. And... As you make your way up, you can see signs of hastily erected barricades, 
Um, they apparently at some point used pool the pool lounge chairs to block off various entrances, exits, but nothing that a few blasts from a phaser couldn't fix. Until you come to the uh, what a fairly nondescript hotel door, hotel room door, among a hallway of other hotel room doors. This door's numbering is what is ten twenty. Um, for Lisa's going to sort of you know, I sure we I'm sure we have like straps for our type threes. Yeah, holsters and you know shoulder yeah. shoulder shoulder slings. That's the word. Yeah, they'll just sort of you know. Uh, put the Type Three phaser over their over the, his eh, over their shoulder, and just very lightly knock on the hotel room door, and they're just going to have their hands up just in case these people have weaponry. Wise precaution. Service. I have your fresh towels. <laughs> <laughs> A little late, but you know, but better late room service, better than none. Um, for Lisa, Hadrix, and Alarak, you all hear the sound of children. Uh, actually, they're begin. T- there's a quick uh, shriek, as apparently no one was expecting a knock, followed by Ooh, yeah. uh, several voices talking in very hushed, hushed and excited whispers. Uh, they are. Hmm, I'm sorry. That water went down the wrong path. There we go. <laughs> they are shushed in turn, and you hear the sound of footsteps coming towards the door. There is a hissing sound, and the door that you are at uh, swings inward, revealing an oh. air, revealing a airlock structure. Surprisingly enough. Hmm. And it, it's not a hastily erected airlock either. It actually seems to have been, you know, part of the hotel. Huh. Impressive. The door closes behind you, and a female uh, voice uh, is amplified into the airlock that you're in. Identify yourself. You are not either. You are not the Chasir. Who are you? Uh, I am <laughs> Lieutenant. I'm just saying, like, for at least somewhat taking the lead here, since they're probably the first one in the room. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, I am Lieutenant Commander Junot Forliza of the USS Concordia with the United Federation of Planets. We mean you no harm. We heard your distress, eh, distress call and decided to come and help. Even though they, uh, even though they appear to be on a push to talk, um, your reaction, uh, so you don't hear it through the speakers, but you still hear it muff, uh, muffled cheers coming through the door. They settle down, and um, the female voice responds again, trying her best not to keep absolute elation and hysteria out of her voice, but they're there. I don't know what half those things are, but I don't care right now. If you're here to save us, that's all I need to know. Please, leave your suits there. We'll decontaminate them of any pathogens. Of course. It's safe. It's Trust me. Uh, do you do that? I... <laughs> I look over to the commander. I shake my head and I start undoing my suit. Okay. Okay. Probably the least sexiest striptease until it comes to Ferliza. <laughs> you haven't seen Alarak yet. <laughs> oh yeah, Alarak is what, about seven foot tall, all gang, all uh, muscle? Yep. Yeah. yeah. He rolls his eyes. All and Kelpian says, meat. First you want me in the suit, now you want me out of the suit. Just do what they want. (laughs) Once you are out of the suit, 
you feel a wave of uh, energy pass over you. Uh, for Lisa, you recognize this in several. Uh, you've rec you've recognized this feeling in uh, several high risk um, contamination zones. It's a sterilization field. Hmm. Um, it's a it's a scanner slash uh, cleansing energy all in one. It kind of hurts you a lot more than the Starfleet ones are, but the pre premise is the same. Mm -hmm. It's like a static shock over your entire body. Your hair stands up on end. It's hilarious. Um, just as soon as you look at um, Commander Hadrix, who is, seems to be enjoying the sensation a lot more than you, <laughs> the, do the inner door uh, parts open, uh, revealing a... It was at one point a lab. You're able to determine that much, but it has been hastily, or it has been uh, repurposed into living, eating, sleeping, and other bodily functions quarters. Um, it's hmm. much larger than what you were led to believe from the outside. Um, you know, where hotels have doors after doors after doors. This one would have taken up at least three or four hotel rooms in size. But this is the only in and out you see. Curious. Uh, there are uh, eight children running around in various stages of uh, maturity. The youngest being approximately two years old. The oldest being young teens, assuming they age like humanoids. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two adults. Both look extremely haggard. One is that, and the other one is that. One female, one male. And unlike the other ones, while their skin is still mottled, uh, that must you was you now believe that to be a, you know, similar to, enough to freckles and not part of the disease. But their their skin shines like an iridescent pale green. It sort of captures the light and reflects it in a sort of a sparkly pattern. The, the male of the two seem to be seems to be more interested in keeping the children in line and the female steps forward. You are Feliza. Yes. You're here to help us? In the best way that we can, yes. Oh, thank the Damya. Thank the Damya. Damya be praised. I am I am Mayatal. I am I was a guest here. I don't know what happened. Everything just... People started getting sick. and I don't, I don't know what happened. Please, just take us out of here. We'll do what we can. Um, okay, I'm not sure what I can necessarily do, but... I have looked at some samples from one of the ones who was sick and well I'm not sure I can derive a cure I'm certainly going to do my best to do so uh, the male uh, bobs up and down sort of like doing a quick squat uh, you seem they seem to be using their entire body as part of their uh, non verbal communication hmm Yes, that anything you, any assistance you can provide us, even just, you came in a ship, right? Some sort of starship? Can, can we go outside? We don't have enough suits for the children. We didn't have suits for ourselves. We found this place by accident. And, Padrix, can you please roll me an insight plus, com, or insight plus command test? Ooh, okay. This will be a difficulty of two. <clears throat> mm, anything about, like, composure? Or... Oh, composure would work quite well. All right. That's a two success. And we'll take it. Yes. You don't need to be an empath to realize that they're lying about 
at least about their nature. There's, their story is far too contrived to, uh, you know, Matt see their current situation. Um, Commander, point of clarification. I try to step up, step away from the, um, the, the two individuals. The entities we ran into on the way here registered as non-humanoid, but these registered as humanoid? If I do recall, yes. Yet they look quite similar. Yeah. Yeah. There's something. Yeah. So I look at the two of them and be like, what can you tell us of the situation going on here? Uh, she. Uh, we don't know, Captain. Or, sorry. I, uh, we don't know. S everything just. Everything was fine until the entire population got sick. We watched it from there. She points to a, a television screen. It's it's flicking through various uh, video cameras. Uh, it's like a security system, really. Everything they just started coughing and they they fell unconscious, and then they died, and then then they got up. They weren't. They they that's no they don't get up. Uh, the male puts her ha puts his hand on her shoulder. She calms from, takes a couple breaths, and recomposes herself. Please help the children. If they can get off this, if we can get them to safety, that will be sufficient. We'll see what we can do about them. But why don't you tell us what's really going on? And he actually. Hedrick's kind of moves his Type 3 a little bit off of his shoulder and more towards a usable... Not He's not pointing it at him, but it's he's got more of a grip on it. Okay. Uh, roll me an opposed presence command test. Well, that's only... Well, you it's you need one success. And there you have it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for Lisa and Alarak, you stumble upon, just by looking at the room, the two of you share a knowing glance that this is not a hotel room. This is a medical lab. And as soon hmm. as you, the two of you come to this conclusion, um, she begin, She sits down. This, we didn't know this was we were only supposed to knock them render them unconscious just we wanted a non-lethal biological weapon not this it was no my I, I just this was supposed to be non, a non-lethal option to end the civil war prove that we could take over their planet without a shot take the at this point, the male steps forward and basically puts a hand on on her chest and pushes her back behind him. I am Doctor Sira. I am of the I am of the loyal I am of the Chasir loyalists. This was supposed to have been a operation to target the. Rebels' leadership gained control. I developed it myself. It was non. It had a advanced neur. It had a advanced neurological control agent, supposed to take control or identify and take control of a host motor functions. I was. I lost control. 
I accept your... Please take me to whichever side of the Chassir conflict you deem appropriate so that I may face charges. But please, the children are those that we could spare before everything happened. Let's get more concerned about getting out of here in one piece first before we worry about anybody else. Our vessel that it, we'd come in on had gotten hit by some kind of powered power drain and our shuttle is not able to hold up on too much energy so if we can't get it fixed then nobody's getting out of here they have a they look back at each other and she goes the lunar the lunar system it was there was a station on the moon that was supposed to trick that was supposed to trigger just long enough to prevent anyone else from leaving a built-in quarantine zone and honestly they were supposed to turn it off unless enterprise go wide with the daily shuttle there's no one alive to turn them off, to turn them off up there and she shakes her head No, probably not likely. Do you have any way to communicate off planet from here? Not with the jamming field in place. It would have to be disabled. And this jamming field is taken is located where? She points to the top of the uh she just points up a beacon up on t a, it's a there sorry gm gm stuttering <clears throat> it's a beak it is a f small antenna array up on the roof we didn't have uh, we don't we weren't willing to risk either one of us f f with prolonged exposure to the elements to go and turn it off oh this seems pretty obvious Doctor, you stay here with Alarak. See, try to get these guys to, you know, get them all together for um, possible transport. I'm going to get this jammer deactivated and see if we can get a hold of the ship. All right. Now, in the essence of time, it's an easy enough trudge up another 40 flights of stairs. It's just a lengthy one. But you make your way up there and you find uh, you find what what the, the, sorry it's getting late and I'm getting stuttery you find what appears to be the or a, a transceiver array that is not part of the entertainment suite do you wish to be nice or do you wish to be violent in your methods of disabling it Let's get this done quick, fast, and violent. <laughs> Let's shoot the damn thing. All right, just for fun, roll me some challenge dice on your phaser rifle. I think it's four plus your security. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Good thing you did. I'm just I'm just rolling the damage. Yeah. Good, because that would have been fun. Okay. No, that would have sucked. Well, you and I think I... very differently of those. <laughs> I mean, you just throw the Type Three at the satellite to have it blow it up. Yeah. <laughs> While you tr you like jump four flights of stairs to avoid the explosion as it comes down. Yeah. 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 Yakatomi. Um. Nakatomi t Tower style. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh. One quick blast of the phaser rifle turns the jamming field into a molten slag. And just like that, you're uh, on the ship, Tegan, you're able to uh, reach, the ex reach the outside world once more. All right, I hit the button to try to send a, out a call. All right. So was that the New Year's ball dropping? 
<laughs> yeah, it was. So, um, due to their locations, um, you are now within s subspace communication of the USS Concordia. Uh, so, uh, Moose, uh, you are ah, you are now informed of the distress call coming from the captain's ship. And we're heading towards it. You are indeed. Uh, ETA is about six hours. All right. Yeah. All right. Bridge engineering. The engineering, sir. Get everyone double checking all systems, making sure everything is in tip top shape as much as we can. We got six hours to make sure that if we come under a fight, this ship's going to stand. That we can do. Okay. All right. More. You got the bridge for a bit. I'm going to go to sick bay. This is looks at his burnt hand. He's like, it's starting to hurt now. <laughs> More is like all stars in the eyes. I get sit in the big chair. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. And I'm just going to move us there just for the sight of us seeing more in the big chair. But if someone is watching and wants to draw an anime style more with stars in his eyes jumping to the <laughs> command chair, please send that to. <laughs> That'd be awesome to watch. Okay. There we go. And more as you get, com you know, get comfortable in there. Legos just looks down from tactical and says, looks good on you, sir. More just matter. A smile. You still technically outrank me. He shrugs. Yeah, but I'll follow your orders. Begrudgingly. Oh, really? Sure. <laughs> okay, now... Uh, does anybody have anything they wish to do in the six hours? Uh, for Elise is going to talk with the, uh, what was the male oh, doc, uh, male? Sila. Dr. Sila, Sila, and the female is Miratol. Sorry, I will get their names on uh, momentarily. I'm going to talk with Dr. Sila since I sort of picked up in that conversation that he was the one who one. sort of engineered this. Mm -hmm. Where is Gan? This one. Mm -hmm. I still haven't fixed that glitch. Anyways, okay. Dr. Sila is hesitant to speak, but he's more than happy to do so. Well, maybe not more than happy, just happy enough. So, I take it you're the one who engineered this. Yes. Yes, I am. Do you have any clues to how we might reverse that? It, wa it wasn't supposed to be reversible. That's the whole point of these things. And he's sort of a bit s sputtery at that, that someone would dare to challenge his work. Well, you're the one who fucked it up, so you should start figuring it out. Okay, look. I've had a bit of time to think, okay? Just... Six months with screaming children and her doesn't make for an ease doesn't make for what one would consider a a a, a healthy work environment. Well, I found a way to save ninety five percent of a population of a planet in about six to seven hours. So, and that was under a very high stress. Oh, shade thrown. Not even thrown, it was like chucked. Hurled like dodgeball. <laughs> okay, look. Here's... He's... Is one of your... Is one of your people sick? Yes, our captain. His eyes go wide. And then they narrow... If I give you all of my research data... 
Well, can I get leniency in whatever court protection you can offer? We'll see. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll me a presence plus medicine test, please. Okay. <laughs> And this will be a difficulty uh, three. Yep, 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 yep. I suppose um, Alrak and and or Hadrix can assist if they wish. Are looking menacing? Yes. <laughs> um. Shoot those spikes out of your neck. Let's see. Uh, I think Alrak is before that. Let's see. Uh. <laughs> Weirdly enough, first contact as a focus, since yeah. this is technically my first contact with this species. It would be, yes. Um. Hmm. I'm looking at values here, because this seems important. Just a little. Um. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm looking at either... I'm kind of looking at the boldly go because I'm kind of throwing shade slash threatening this dude, and for Lisa's usually not like that. No, no, he's not. I know they're not. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll let that work. Okay. All right. Uh, and I have a focus, so we'll see how it goes. Well, there's five successes. I'd say, yeah. Yeah. So that nets us two momentum. Mm-hmm. Uh, so under the stern eyes that only a doctor, that only a chief medical officer and a doctor can summon, uh, you manage to out intimidate this poor man. This poor man who's been in this four room com, you know, large complex for the last six months. It's like there's a pandemic outside and he's forced to quarantine. Wonder what that's like. Hmm. Uh, weird. Yeah. Very weird. <laughs> He and uh, Dr. Mayatol. Dr. Mayatol is a little more happy to, um, you know, give you information, but he hands over all of his notes as well. Uh, it's very quick to see the neuro, and uh, it's very quick to determine what the growth is in the captain's uh, neck. Is it is a? It's basically a second, a second nervous system. Hmm. Uh, that is supposed to tie into the brain and be a little more uh, susceptible to uh, suggestion, similar to you know what you know people under hypnosis may feel. Yeah. Just you know, they have no control over it. The problem is is that it seems to have high, based on your scans of the undead and the captain. It seems to be hijack taking a more active role in a person's in the person's brain function instead of you know a passive one. Hmm. Um, neural inhibitors, that sort of stuff, would slow it down. But aside from complex neurals, like complex brain surgery, that really should not be performed on a shuttlecraft. Might be the only way to get rid of this thing. Thankfully, though, you have time. It's barely more than a quarter the size of a quarter. But given time, it will grow and it will uh, shift, and it will become nigh unremovable. Got it. Okay. And looking over these notes, does it seem like the uh, surgery seems to be like the uh, the only way of quote unquote curing this? Would I be able to? Maybe create a new gas that would hmm. kill that second nervous system. Maybe. Hmm. I'll roll. Well, now that you know what you're dealing with accurately, roll me a reason plus medicine with a difficulty okay. of three, and that's already taking your oh. uh, quick study into account, because okay. you have an entire wealth of Federation 
medicine behind you that this guy probably doesn't know about. Um, okay. Oh, well, that's interesting uh, there, Captain. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Let's see. Um, I... Oh, that might, fi- that might uh, light a fire under his doctor ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, while, while Forliza's rolling that, uh, Commander Hadrix, you receive a rather panicked call from uh, Finnell. Um, the captain has just sat up. And is drooling everywhere. Mm. Oh wait, Hadrix went BRB. Uh, for Lisa, you received the call yeah. from the captain. Is or you oh, received from Finnell. The captain has just sat up and he's drooling everywhere. Okay. Um. Okay. Looking over stuff. Looking over stuff. Uh. God, it's one of those weird things where it's like I'm not sure I really have a focus. Um, I'm pulling on, I'm I'm pulling on everything I can think of. Uh, I mean, like cybernetics, emergency medicine, surgery, triage, xenobiology. I will let xenobiology work. Okay, uh, it's a stretch, momentum, but I'll let it. Yeah. Uh, I'll take a momentum for a third die. Okay. <clears throat> and I do have a focus. There's the three successes you need. Okay. Okay. Um, so there is a. Oh, fooey! Which episode was it? It's one of those Voyager ones. Um, basically, um, because you you are in the remote sectors of space, you have rel- you have pulled a lot from the Doctor from Voyager. Um, and there were several episodes of him removing. Um, Borg technology from individuals. Uh, Borg technology is extremely invasive, requires a very delicate hand, and several very, very niche medical products. And he, he developed three of them during this time. You are fairly certain that using similar techniques, so long as you act quickly, you should be able to get the captain back up and running. But the one caveat is you need the fully functioning sick bay, not the um, not the uh, bio bed of the runabout. Thankfully, the uh, Tegan has received a response saying that the Sutherland, or not the Sutherland, the Concordia, will be uh, arriving within the within about five hours. Okay. Um. Are we able to project like a? Uh... I'm trying to think of the right way to put it. Like a force field around the bio bed if we haven't already. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I would assume that those basic security precautions are in place. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um Are you heading okay. back to the ship? I can take care of this, but we need the sick bay. Okay. Okay. Um have we gotten a ping back from the ship? I'm going to assume that, yes, you have received the, um, you've received a quick message from the Concordia saying that their hold tight will be there in six, in five hours. And I'll, uh, oh, it is, do we have a, uh, Hadrix back? I don't think he's back yet. Nope, uh, he seems too caught up, uh, playing father figure with all the children. Okay, then. Uh, I'm just going to look to, I guess, both him and Alarak at this point. Okay, uh, I can save him, but we're going to need sick bay and just about everything at our disposal. Um, you think you can figure out how to get these people to the shuttle safely? Alarak? <laughs> you know, if I hit my my push to talk button it usually works yes i think we can make that happen okay good good and for the is just gonna take off are you 
going to at least, you know, take the time to suit up before you run outside? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're suiting up. Hey, welcome back, Hadrix. Uh, Verliza has a cure idea, and he's running back to the runabout and leaving the, you know, scary doctor people and the children to you guys. Sounds good. Preferably wear your suit. Yeah. Uh, yep. I put it on before I left. No worries. Yeah. Okay. One run scene later. It's very uh, tiring to run down several flights of stairs and an open field at a parking lot in a full EVA suit. But for Lisa, adrenaline is what's keeping you going. Uh, let's see. Back in the interior of the runabout. Uh, Finnell, you're guarding the exit when Forliza bangs on it to be opened up. And in he comes. Uh, Forliza, you are looking at a captain who is sit, sat bolt upright. Uh, his jaw is hanging slack. His eyes are staring unblinking. And the quarantine field is in place. Okay, good. I'm not necessarily sure if you can hear me, Captain, but... We're gonna save you. It's gonna take some time, but... We can... We can make you better. Okay. And in the essence of time, once again, I am just going to cut to two. the USS Concordia arrives in orbit around the planet, or I should ask, is anyone going to warn the Concordia? That's the next thing I should ask. Yes, I would be planning to warn the Concordia. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Moose, or Primrose, you have dropped out at the edge of the system. You're now able to talk real time to the away team. This one. Oh, yeah, I'm back on the bridge now. Yeah, I figured you would be. Your hands are fully healed. I boot more out of my feet. <laughs> he slinks back there like a sad boy. He's like, it was nice <laughs> while it lasted. Concordia to away team. This is Commander Hadrix. Moose, you're all right up there? Peachy fine. Got a little warning for you. There is a energy dampening field in this system on a moon that they've I've been informed of. So you will want to search for that and either disable it or destroy it if necessary. Well, I already got a Troy Cobalt device ready for a moon buster. More scan for this moon. Yes, sir. Uh, see, oh yeah, scene change. You lose one momentum. You'll probably gain it right back, but. Uh, Insight science, sensor, and sensor science from the ship. It was going to be difficulty three, but now you know what to look for, so difficulty two. And I have sensors as a focus and technical expertise. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, there's the three successes, so one momentum already. Who's got the ship? I have it up. All right. Sensor science from the ship, please. Okay. Two momentum. Uh -huh. Moore, you detect a... Uh, you detect a dampening field the, surrounding the planet. It's actually quite subtle. Um, the sensors of the runabout may would definitely have not picked it up unless they knew to look for it. And you're definitely seeing the uh, origin of it coming from the planet's only moon. Can I pinpoint the exact spot on the moon? Yes, you can. I send the location to Lagos. Aim there. Any life signs first? No, no life signs. I'll count that as your free question. Works for me. Lagos. Do some landscaping. <laughs> uh, 
let's roll some challenge. I'm not even going to ask for the roll because you have time to prepare and all that stuff. Uh, let's roll some challenge dice. So, uh, it's a torpedo. Let's roll five plus your ship's security. Oh, dry cobalt devices. I don't actually remember what damage they're supposed to do, but this is good enough. And who's going to roll that? Yeah, who wants to roll the... Who wants yeah, to sure. break a moon? I, I'll give that a roll. I haven't punched anyone today, so... All right, go for it, man. Let's see. What's the ship? Uh, it's security that is rolling, right? Yep. Security plus five challenge dice. Okay, seven. It's respectable. Mm -hmm. We've got momentum. You can burn one to reroll those two zeros if you want to. I can sure. Go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, didn't we have a moon? No, no, you just have a belt now. <laughs> Uh, that is eight plus three. Cool. You love it. Yeah. Uh, so Boom. you are treated to the sight of a moon being hit by a substantial explosion. Uh, it's not enough to completely d destroy the moon, but it is enough to, you know, no longer make it a spheroid. Needless to say, the power field is um, the power draining field is no longer a thing. So we could have done the long thing of taking a pot shot with a phaser, like, oh, they have shields. Okay, let's fire a tor a torpedo. Oh, it's, it's going to take a few. Try cobalt. <laughs> Just one undone. Yep. Apparently, it has a devastate quality. <laughs> oh, that does not surprise me. Okay, so I don't care without this, anyways. And with that, it is now safe to enter the orbit. Although there is, it's now becoming a ringed planet, but that will take a few years. And yeah, you're basically your sensors basically can are link up with that of the runabouts, and you're able to pretty much determine everything that they have. The atmosphere is. Um, have, is now a biohazard. Other than that, it's a nice, sunny, respectable, clean planet. The beaches would probably be amazing if the locals weren't out to kill you. <laughs> Concordia to away team. This is away team. Concordia, uh, yeah, take care of the moon. Uh, take a look up. I'm sure you can see. I'm in a makeshift bio lab. I can't see much of anything right now. Oh, well, yes, the, the the lab has been purged. Good to hear. Um, myself and Alarak are here with about a dozen other um, people that will need to be beamed off. The shuttle itself, um, the captain at last known mention was un incapacitated, so we need to get him to sick bay as soon as possible. Understood. Okay. Well, the transport chief is currently on the away mission. That's alright. That's what, you know, you have a crew of 700-ish. I'm sure there's others. So... Yeah, just, yeah, we'll just use a third tier. It's all good. Yeah. So... Um, can more do a scan to see if there's any other humanoid life signs popping up on the planet. That's a good idea. Uh, roll me an insight plus medicine test and the ship will assist with sensors plus medicine. Insight medicine test. Oh boy. Um, rolling a whole 11. Um, sensors? Yep. Okay. Um, the science doesn't lie as a determination. Sure. And you said sensors medicine for the ship? Yes, please. Reroll that from the ship because I have uh, technical expertise. Aw. All right, there's the two successes you need. 
So, well, I also burned my determination. Oh, so there's two more. Oh, four. Nice. That's what I get for trying to set up a scene ahead of time and trying to pay attention to one. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. So, four successes. What am I finding? Uh, sadly, you are finding a planet that is devoid of all humanoid life signs aside from those that you have already been, that you already know about. Nothing like underground caverns or anything? Sadly not. This is a resort world, not a, well, supposed to be a resort world. Fair. Um, seeing that, I report to uh, the commander that there, other than who the, our away team are with, there's no other uh, life signs matching the description of the species. Um, is there a way for me to neutralize the biohazard in the atmosphere? Uh, not without doing a lot more... Um... Not without doing a lot more work that this episode does not account for. Fair enough. If you want to spend some time in between episodes, that can probably be done, but it's just it's not relevant at the moment. Fair. But what is relevant is one transport scene later. We're going to f- we are going to find Doctor Ferliza, the captain, Nurse Krim, all in biohazard suits. In sick bay. Time so, for some surgery. Time for some surgery, do, indeed. Do, 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 do. Okay. So this is going to be a control plus medicine test. If someone wants to, uh, because this is going to be very difficult, even with advantages, I will let the ship and Krim assist. Uh, this is going okay. to be a difficulty of four test. And okay, I'm I got spend, Krim. I'm going to spend some threat to increase the difficulty or the complication range 18 to 20. Okay. And you said we could use uh, milestones as a uh, determination once a game? Yeah, uh, two points, two milestone points for one determination, yes. Okay. I will spend two. Mm hmm. All right, what's the role we're going with? Control medicine. Uh, control medicine. So I and got internal right. medicine, infectious disease for a focus? I will let that work, yes. Well, and I've got surgery as a focus, so that'll apply. Mm-hmm. And the ship would be computers or sensors medicine? Uh, computers plus medicine, please. And that is the advantage for being in sick bay, is you get two people assisting. Like I said, that's four. Yep, that's the four successes you need. Boop. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so, um, it is a harrowing hour-long uh, surgery where you are, you know, using the finest point laser scalpels you can. Um, the captain is flat on his back as you have his entire spine um, up to his skull opened up. And piece by piece, removing these tendrils until you can f- until you finally get at the ganglia with a slightly shaky paw hand, you are able to perform one last and Krim reports that there is no f- ah, no a- no alien contaminant left within the captain. Okay. Okay. Actually. Didn't you say you increased the complication range, McCall? I did, yes. That's zero from the ship is a complication. Oh, is that so? Okay. Um... Can I ignore that with parent figure? Let me read parent figure. <laughs> the ship does think of you as a father figure or a mother figure. <laughs> I guess my question to you, McCall, mm-hmm. and this, the answer is probably no. Uh, yeah. Does the ship count as a character that's involved in this? I don't think it does. Um, Doctor, can you do me a daring plus medicine test, please? 
me. Yes, with a difficulty of two. Okay. Okay. It's not bad. Uh, would this be considered uh, surgery or emergency medicine? I'll call it emergency medicine. Cool. Love that. Six uh, momentum. Yeah, we got momentum. Uh, my daring medicine is pretty good, though. Still so take a momentum. Yeah, no, I'm doing it anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna risk it. Uh, Thanks. How much appreciate you it? Uh, yeah, I think I just need the one. Actually, yeah, let's let's buy two. Yeah. Okay. Because that. Okay, that's uh, good. The th that's two you need plus one more momentum. Uh, so. Uh, as uh, Lieutenant Krim reports that no um, da, that no alien contaminant is left in the captain's body, the ganglia or the uh, cluster of nerves that you have severed uh, physically springs from the tray where you placed it and an attempt to latch itself onto uh, Lieutenant Krim's face a la alien. However, with your laser scalpel in hand, you do a quick flick and bisect it. Cool. Yep. Uh, she lets out a small gasp. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good gasp there. Good gasp. You can find <laughs> me a, and I'll just say, you can find me a drink in the iceberg later, and I'll just sort of sit down and start watching over the captain until they wake up. Naturally, I don't want to rush him. You might want to stitch his spine back up first. He, I mean, yeah, I'll do that. But I, you know, after all yeah. said and done, kind of figured that. So, um, an indeterminate amount of time later, uh, Hadrix, Moore, Moose, all the senior staff. Well, actually, the captain wakes up. Uh, for Lisa, who do you want to call, if anyone? Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew that was coming, and I still said it. Hurry, somebody get Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd on the phone. Uh, <laughs> uh, probably probably all the senior staff. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, probably yeah. just... Okay. Uh, yeah. He, he breathes, and you recognize some of Alpha Brainwaves, and you just tap your badge and go, everybody get down here. One quick scene change. One quick fade later. And even Knowles here, because Knowles a, a caring bullion. Uh, Captain Bashir. Is he though? <laughs> after what feels like an eternity in some of the worst and weirdest dreams of your life, you could have sworn... I don't know. Have you seen my dreams? <laughs> I wouldn't know, but they're the worst <laughs> and the weirdest of them. You could have sworn the last thing you remember was in the shuttle, um, as the shuttle was careening into a planet. And now you're waking up in sickbay, surrounded by, well, Dr. Ferliza's smiling face. And yeah. as your eyes come into focus, the rest of your senior staff are watching from a respectable distance. So what did I miss? Uh, you missed being close to death, Captain. Care to you're welcome, doctor? by the way. Uh, <laughs> well, long story short, uh, that planet we were supposed to go to, um, it's basically all but gone. Uh, there was a biological weapon that made their people into a it seems like something out of film at this point, but a zombie. And you were infected with it, and uh, almost became one of them, sir. Hurt anyone? No. Now that's a plus. That it is, Man. Captain. Adrix, have we quarantined off the planet? We've quarantined what needed to be done, and we've taken care of what we have to do to make sure everybody's not infectious. 
Okay. Captain, at this point, you just need to make sure you rest. <laughs> yeah, I was going to try to get out of bed. <laughs> Nope, nope, you're on bed rest for a bit. Yeah, on the other side of things, we had an encounter with a little gray man. Apparently they were uh, examining multiple realities, looking for anything unique, and then they would exterminate it. But um, I kicked in their door. Extremely dangerous, and they're not gonna like that. No, they don't seem to like tricobalt devices either. Commander, I don't think most people like tricobalt devices. No, well, that's true. They don't like them for long if one's fired at them, though. <laughs> they got What's the rest this? of their lives to hate them. Was this in this sector? Uh, the Balea. Trinary Star system. Apparently they were just hanging out there. I think they destroyed the system. Or it's got a new black hole. Yeah. We should try it was to fun. find We should try to find them. They have a lot of information we could use. Hmm. Well, they seem interested in me because of my temporal anomaly. Put me on the end of a fishing line, dangle me out. See what happens. Might do that. Okay. I'll come Adrian. up with an idea for a tricorbal bomb. I think it's going to take a lot more than to destroy them. Okay, fine. Five tricobalt bombs. <laughs> that might dent it. <laughs> Last thing I knew is they can dimension hop and they do experiments from take people unconscious and do experiments on them. They're some extra dimensional beings. Well, you didn't hear it from me. And no one else heard this either. Could try... I think it's an isolytic detonator. I can't remember the name of it. Basically, good chance to rip a hole in subspace. They really paused when I threatened them with that. See if we can make a contact with... Uh, Starfleet Security in, patac in particular. Get me... Uh... Commander, uh, uh, so tired. <laughs> uh, Commander, so tired. I will. No. I'll make sure. <laughs> I'll ask you later, Captain. You just rest up. Okay, sounds good. We'll figure it out. Thank you all. I appreciate it, Doctor. Captain. Are you wearing those really cool, like, res outfits with the face mask that makes no sense? <laughs> oh, God, oh, no, no. Oh, no, oh, no. Forliza hates that shit. They're in, like, uh... They're in almost, like, the more, like, uh... I guess, for them, hundreds of years ago. But for us, the more, like, uh... Common surgery garb. God. Yeah, scrubs. Uh, yeah. Okay, scrubs. good. <laughs> Great TV show. <laughs> well, the first eight seasons. Well, you, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's the matter? Anyways, on that <laughs> note, I will. I believe it's a good place to wrap up. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the penultimate episode where I tried to give everyone a, their time in the sun. I think it worked out very well. And I will see you all next. Yeah, I'll see you all next week for the finale of the expanse which should be a very fun time so thank you all for watching and thank you very much for playing bye bye, bye. bye. later bye, bye.